Yeah, it really felt like a finale. Fushi was able to catch up to Pioran, who was, well, um, dining on peas and bread. Ayon nga magpakita si Fushi sa kanye. So, ang ginawa ni Fushi, nag-provide na lang siya. Uh, habang natutulog si Pioran, binigyan niya ng, ng kumot out of fur. That was, uh, binigyan pa niya ng pagkain na siyempre gawa niya. Was already on the ship uh, to to leave. Eh, parating inaalala niya si Pioran. Nabigyan niya ng gamit, balik siya sa... Uh, balik siya sa ship pero magdi-disguise siya sa mole naalala niya teka ang lalamig si Pyora pagkano babalik naman dyan doon <laughs> walang ganun yun eh it's obvious if you saw the episode it's obvious that he decided to to just follow Pioran so nakita naman niya uh, Pioran can't defend herself and um, she, he has already accepted the fact that Pioran doesn't need him to um to to live life. Ngayon, um, he showed us something extraordinary here in this episode. He turned into Uroy, Upa, at si and Mia in that order. So she, he he left um, the area where Pioran is as Mia. Eh, naramdaman yata ni Pioran na mayroong nagmamanman sa kanya. So sinundan siya. Nahuli siya. At nagpang, nagpanggap siyang babae. Pero nope. Pioran saw through that. She knows it's Fushi. So, yun. Eventually, nag, uh, ano, magkasama na naman yung dalawa. And it, they ended up in the forest of Sol 9. Na bukang bibig pa natin ni Pioran na pinakatahimik na lugar na napuntahan na niya. Of all time. So, dito sa na nag... Dito sa na nag... Take up residence... They're having a good life. And they also set some rules. Especially when the knockers are are at least are at least half a kilometer away. As um kasi ang tumi, well, you, we all know ang tumitimbre kay Fushi kasi ang beholder mismo. Kapag malapit na ang knockers ganyan, 500 meters away. Oy, teka! Impake muna kami ni Pioran. Alis kami. Ganun, ganun ang naging set of rules sila. It, it revolved around that. The knockers. Fushi has also made it the point to keep a diary of things. Marunong siya. Okay? Marunong siya mag-document ng, ng, ng travel sila. Now, according to the beholder, uh, Fushi is now... Fushi has now developed a sense of self. Yung talagang solid na sense of self. He has that already. Then, one day, um, nagsimula nang mag-ulyanin si Pioran. Talagang, um, the senility ha- is getting worse by the day, as shown in the episode. Talagang, nagiging pasanin na siya kay Fushi, although Fushi doesn't want to admit it. While Fushi was running an errand, humiga na lang si Piora kasi, ano na lang siya, talagang, she's now confined to a bed, si Piora. So, humiga na lang si Piora at humiling sa beholder whom she calls the black thing. Sabi niya, If I am to die today, please turn me into something more useful to Fushi. For the very first time, the beholder makes himself visible to someone other than Fushi. Si Pioran. Nagpakita siya kay Pioran. And, tinanong niya kay Pioran, Whatever changes your body will will undergo in that new body, do you accept? Something to that effect. Ganon ang pagkakatanong niya kay Pioran. Pioran just said yes. The beholder obliged. Pinabata siya. Then, eventually, he takes out this orb. Doon niya in-encase ang kaluluwa ni Pioran. So, what does this mean, mga ka-lifestyle? Pioran is now an orb. She will now start the same journey Fushi was in when this anime started. So, yun, nakita na lang ni Fushi na wala na buhay si Pioran. I gotta admit mga ka it was a really sad scene 
talagang Fushi just dropped to his knees and started crying. And by the time he was able to bury Pioran, talagang halata eh, na mga magaling ilong. So he, he, prob- he, probably, he probably cried his ass off all day. And um, when, he, when he took out his um, records, kasi he, he's also got into this habit that once he writes down uh, something in his, uh, in his records, sinusunog niya agad. Tinanong din siya ni Piora nun eh. Teka, bakit mo? Kasusunog mo lang eh. Susunog mo na agad. Well, Fushi said, it's okay. I can always, I can always get them back. Yan, ganun lang eh. Lalo, pinalalabasan niya sa kamay niya eh. Pen and paper. Oh, sulat siya ulit. Now, he saw in this record that yung minsan sinabi ni Pioran sa kanya na na naisulat niya. Now, Pioran said, according to that record of his, something to this effect. Live your life the way you want to. Like I did. So, medyo naging emotional na naman si Fushi and just said, as you say, Pioran. So, final scene. It has been decades after that. And, well, the Beholder hasn't had any news of Fushi since Pioran's passing. So, decades after, ayun, pinakita na Fushi has just won another battle with the Knockers. Pero, ang itsura niya, Mm. Excuse me. Fushi looks older like me. Kano na itsura ni Fushi ngayon? As in, talagang mamang-mama na ang itsura niya. So what does this mean, mga ka-lifestyle? The storyline of the To Your Eternity anime isn't over yet. So let's break the finale down ARD style. Pace! Excuse me. Except for that scene where Hayes's arm was shown grabbing that man offering her food. Uh, the overall pacing of this episode was slow but with purpose. Because Fushi was experiencing this um this period of happiness like uh, he's with his he's with his best friend and mentor. So we can we can, we can call Pyora his mentor because Pyora was the one who actually taught him how to read and write. Si Piora na nagturo sa kanya nito. And of course, the finer things of life. Like, uh, uh, money. Like, uh, uh, how to feed yourself. How to clean yourself. Mga ganon. Basic human survival skills. Kasi, kung binilisan nila ang pace nito, wala eh. Mabababoy ang kamatayan ni Piora. Kasi, we're, you're going to this 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 episode you're going to air has a death scene. For in talagang sabi ko sa inyo, pag napanood niyo, for those who haven't seen the episode, you should watch it. Talagang ako muntik na ako umiyak sa scene na to because Fushi just found Pioran dead lying down. Akala mo tulog. Siguro na katulog, ayun. Probably dying in her sleep. It was a rather sad ending for the finale. You have to capture that by building it up from the start of the episode kasi major character si Pioran and for her to die kasi because of old age she's almost 90 years old when this happened so natural talagang hahabulin na siya ng panahon her, her time will come anytime ayun dumating na oras niya you gotta capture that by Showing the the viewers how happy the uh, the friendship was before that. Pioran was already showing signs that she's about to go. Because she began, she 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 was slowly becoming senile. In piti pong, nare kakain lang nila eh. Tinatano niya kung na iluto niyong pagkain. Gulat ngani pusi kanina. Teka, Pioran, kakakain lang natin ah. Pag mo'y nahanap. Tapos magliliklamo si Pioran, Hoy! Hindi ka ba nagluluto? 
magluto ka ulit. Ganon. And at one point she was she is she was also paranoid of of the of Yanome. Of the Yanome. Sinasabi niya parati kay Fushi, "Uy, abay alerto ka baka atakin na tayo ng mga Yanome." Where there's several hundred miles from the Yanome's home from the Yanome's home turf. Wow. Um, she was getting senile na. So that's that's a sign already that anytime she can go. You, you gotta build that up through the pacing. Mo period period of happiness. Then signs that this will lead to this. It was well paced. It was well paced. Talaga mararamdaman mo na finale nga ito because of the pacing. Flow naman. What? First gear shift here was was when Fioran actually saw Fushi again. Talagang hindi niya mapagka, mapagkaila, mapagkakaila na si Fushi ito eh. Siguro, uh, that show of concern and yung the undertone that is Fushi, kahit ano pang kahit ano pang form niya, it's there. So, talagang na talagang gamay na gamay na ni Fioran ang ugali at yung yeah, yung style ni Fushi. So, wala na magagawa si Fushi. Talagang kilalang kilala siya ni Fioran. What does this gear shift tell us? Well, it just goes to show us that despite the different adventures Fushi has uh, has gone through, Fioran was the one constant. Since since the Yanomi arc pa. So, talagang gano'n na katagal ang samahan nila ni, ni Pioran. And you can see na there's also a student-teacher relationship here. Kasi, Fushi is an alien. He's on this planet tot, knowing uh, has zero knowledge of how to of how to live on it. Pioran showed him the way. At hindi siya Kailanman hindi siya niloko, hindi siya nilaglag, hindi rin siya tin... In all manner, say, hindi siya tinraidor ni Pioran. Talagang tapat na kaibigan si Pioran. That's what this gear shift will tell you. Second gear shift was when, well, Pioran started becoming senile. Why do they call this a gear shift? Simple! It's a clear sign that Pioran's time is almost up. Senility, even in real life, senility is a clear sign that someone, uh, someone is about to go. Yare, uh, father, your mother, grandmother, grandfather, uncle. Especially uh, when you're, um, when when they're they're really old. That's the talagang senyalis talaga. Na kapag naging ulianin ang isang tao, it's a clear sign already that he he or she is about to go. In that case, like like Fushi showed us in the in this episode, habaan mo ang pasensya mo. So just like just like what Fushi did, basically he just couldn't accept the fact that um, Bjorn is uh is really old and. She doesn't have much time left. We narning ang nangasan noon ng beholder that Pioran is living on borrowed time. She's almost 90 years old. So anytime she can leave you, Fushi. Well, for that fact, hindi niya mat hindi matanggap talaga ni Fushi. That's why I call it the gear shift. Because it also happens in real life. Final gear shift is of course yun. When Fushi saw Pioran's dead body, talagang, if you have seen the episode, talagang, you can say that Pioran died peacefully. But before actually dying, she she called out the beholder and made made her final wish. Na that if she's about to go. She wants to. She wants to be reborn as something more useful to Fushi. Because talagang 
Siguro she has been feeling that she's holding Fushi down. She's uh, overburdening him. Na itong pagiging ulyanin niya eh liability na sa pagdevelop ni Fushi bilang bilang tao. Talagang in the end inalala niya si Fushi. So that's what this gear shift will will make you realize. That in the end Pyoran was Fushi's most trusted ally. Kay ano pang tanda niya? Never never niyang iniwan si Fushi, never niyang nilaglag ito. Si Tona rin nga nilaglag na nga si Fushi niya. Nilaglag na nga niya si Fushi noon, di ba? That triggered the Jananda arc. So Talagang you would through this gear shift you would say thank you Pyoran. Thank you for for being there for Fushi at all times. And what well, she deserves to be an orb. Maybe you know, immortal ka na. And you can be you you can be reborn. So I guess the beholder uh, made the right call here to turn her into an orb. Tapos make make her go through the same journey as Fushi did. Para maranasan din niya kung ano yung pinagdaanan ni Fushi. Bef- way before he met the wolf the unknown boy or even even march so dalagang ano tamdam ko rito eh muntik na ako umiyak ka, talaga kanina mga kalaista when, when I was watching the episode when um Fushi started mourning for Pioran dalagang muntik na gumagano na ako sa mata ko eh so these three gear ships in all indications, the final gear ship of this series uh, has told me that there will be a season two. I say well, we got something to bank on right now. Plot wise, yeah, malinis. Sa sobrang linis, mararamdaman mo yung lungkot ni Fushino nung namatay si Pioran. Talagang uh, Talagang mararamdaman mo na ito na ang finale ng To Your Eternity At least for, for this season Yeah, it's one, of, it's one of the saddest endings this summer I guarantee you that mga ka-lifestyle And the plot will make you realize that It's a really solid plot Solid but clean so, pace, flow, and plot, they came together for this episode. They came together for this finale. Talagang masasabi mo na, finale ng isang anime ito. If you ask me, it's one of the saddest um, finales this, uh, this an- at, for at least this, an- this anime season. So, to your eternity, finale! Easy po. Oh! Right after the finale ended, Brainsbase announced that You seen the B-roll? It is a legit B-roll from Brainsbase themselves, the animation studio behind To Your Eternity. It will have a season 2 scheduled for fall of next year. Kaya. If you're uh, if you're a fan of To Your Eternity, you got something to look forward to for uh, for at least one whole year. Kaya, habang iniintay mo yun, eh, for the other animes in this uh, in this particular season and the upcoming animes for fall. And well, I've seen the lineup, guys. There are a lot of mecha animes that will that will start airing next fall. Kaya, tutok na sa next lineup ko. So, again, to your eternity, thank you for giving us um, such a great time watching and uh, for in my case reviewing you and of course thank you Pioran thank you for being a staunch ally to the main protag si Fushi 
If you ask me, mga ka lifestyle, to your eternity is one of the best animes this year. 20 episodes worth of quality deep dives, quality uh, entertainment, and all fueled by a quality storyline. Talagang, it's not going to waste your time. If you, well, you, you can watch it over and over again and still not be bored of it. I assure you. But for the last time, thank you to your eternity. Thank you. Until, well, see you in fall 2022. So again, to your eternity, finale. Two thumbs up. The last two thumbs up I'll ever give this anime. For now, Maha Lifestyle. Thank you, Piora. So well, they're starting to be teasered. <laughs> Tapos ni. Magkita na lang tayo ng fall 2022 for season 2. Kaya, in the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Looks like the road to this anime's finale has begun. You remember Yui, the waitress the Kitty Hara brothers uh, rescued during episode 2? The story practically began with her. You see, some co-worker of hers ratted her out because she accidentally told that person that she can see the future although not as uh, not as clearly so the SWE is after her and the Kirihara brothers were again there to save her na tanong niya kina Naoya na paano nyo nalaman na in trouble na naman ako paano nyo ko natuntunan well, Naoya explained quite simply the cryptic notebook was telling them that this is going to happen so pinakita nila yung notebook na pinagsusulat ni, ni Shoko Futami obviously they're the only psychics who can read the cryptic notebook pinabasa na nito kay Yui hindi niya mabasa and a mo moments later now to reveal that uh, it's written in Rongo Rongo, the language that was found on Easter Island. Wow! Grabe. So anyway, uh, while this was happening, the Korokis were getting answers because during the opening scene, Takoya was beginning to doubt the intentions of the SWE and well, of the Japanese government overall. Him and Yuya started asking Kimi questions regarding basically this. What's in Abed and Kimi na she just couldn't, she just can't explain why the Kiriharas are there in Yuya's vision. But Yuya, being the impatient one, did something that, well, triggered the events of the second half of the episode. See this laptop screen here? Ganito ang pagkakagawa niya. He just touched uh, Kimmy's laptop screen and boom! Uh, a deluge of information entered his brain. But at the same time, he was able to to locate the Kiriharas. Naramdaman ni Naoya ito. And just said something to this effect. Kuya, we better go. The SWA just found us. Tinapin din ako to. Itakbo na ni Naoya si Kimi, si Yui. And true enough, minutes later, the SWA is again there. Helicopter in hand. Of course, the... With the... Uh, with the... With the Koroki's team leader. Of course, the, the brothers are there. And all of a sudden, the device being used by the SWE known as the Prophet suddenly spoke through Yuya ordering Kimi to connect it to him Sinagupa na naman ni Takoya si Naoto so, Round 2 and he started asking practically the very same questions they asked Kimi and Naoto again said what in the hell are you talking about? 
wala naman kami doon. In the back of Takuya's mind, he knows that it's quite impossible kasi magkakita naman sila eh. Paano na nabuhay ang mga kirihara noon nung biglang nawala mga magulang nila? Korokis are being reckless again. But in the case of Yuya, while this was, while his brother was engaging Naoto, kinakosap siya ng prophet in the form of an old lady. The prophet disclosed everything to Yuya. The events of June 2023 wasn't a, uh, a natural catastrophe or, or a war, a great war. It was the time when the earth was split into a physical one and a psychic one. She further told Yuya that the psychic world is full of hypocrisies. I'm not all brainwashing. Obviously, paniwala paniwala naman si Yuya. The prophet just simply gave Yuya uh, orders that the Kiriharas are the ones causing the imbalance, so they should get rid of them as soon as possible. Bitaw na ang prophet kay Yuya. Final scene. All of a sudden, a this this light again. Takes the Kirihara brothers. Uh, the Kiriharas disappear again, but with one difference. They they left the cryptic notebook. Oh my god. In akin na huya ito eh. So, siguro nung lumito yung ilaw, I think he, I think na huya accidentally dropped this. Kasi na, ano na sila na, nakita na naman sila ng SWE. I think in his, uh, in his panic, he dropped this cryptic notebook. I hope the SWE doesn't get its hands on this. So let's break this episode down ARD style. Pace. From the time Yui got in trouble again with the SWE, things have been tense. The pace picked up. Of course, kasi the SWE is hell-bent on getting rid of psychics, except their own. Talk about double standards. So, the pacing will make you realize this double standard policy the uh, the Japanese government is implementing through the SWE, of course. You just uh, call it stomach their double standards. Why? It makes me sick. Because for me, well... At least the, the pacing is making me realize this that the SWE are the real villains here. They are employing a um, a psychic AI. Kasi pinakita sa isang scene na uh, the SWE is trying to keep this AI alive. So it means it's being run by a psychic. The pacing will make you realize this. It will really make you... Um, Loathe the SWE even more. Talagang you will you'll be compelled to treat these guys as villains, and the Korokis are willing victims. That's the way I see it. At least the uh, the base is trying to uh, make me see it. Flo naman. Well, first gear shift here was when Yui was being. Uh, Arrested by the SWE. Kasi, well, a co-worker of hers ratted her out. What does this gear shift tell you? Simple. It basically tells you to hate the SWE even more. Kasi, uh, like I said a while ago, the Japanese government is implementing this double standard policy regarding psychics. Tutumba nila ang kahit sinong psychic na na walang silbi sa kanila. But they are keeping psychics in their ranks. Quite a corrupt government, would you say? This gear shift is trying to tell me that. Second gear shift was when Yuya touched Kimmy's laptop, laptop screen like that. And... No, basically, basically, he psychically tapped into the network. 
um, trying to find the answer to their questions, but he inadvertently found the Kiriharas. What does this gear shift tell us? Well, simple. Yuya's psychic powers. They're... They are getting scarier by the episode. Pero ba naman, ginanon lang niya ang screen ng laptop ni Kimi. He's already in the network, trying to find those answers. And, wow, talk about character development. Yuya is getting scarier by the episode. Kasi, his powers are developing exponentially. Mabilis pa sa kapatid niya. These scanners like Yuya and these uh, well, empaths like Naoya in the world of Nighthead they are they are even scarier than telekinetics bakit? well bottom line they can read your mind and they can uh, they can tell where you are they can even invade your privacy practically and that is scary final gear shift was when the light does its thing again the kiriharas disappear with one exception the cryptic notebook the way it looks now yeah drop this notebook to go in hispanic when that light appeared ito naman si yui takantaka ko nang nangyari yung mga enforcers na aresto sana kay Naoya sila sila Michio at si si Reina eh passed out na naman what does this gear shift tell us? well the psychic earth is is doing its part to keep the well obviously to keep the Kiriharas safe from harm siguro they are they are keys to this whole engine the way I see it, Shokofutami is practically keeping the Kiriharas alive, psychically. The way I see it, again, Shokofutami is this light. Kasi ganun siyang alakas na psychic. And the physical earth has their own version, the prophet. You know, this gearship is also telling me now that that during the split, there were psychics who were deemed worthy of the psychic earth and there were also psychics who were deemed unworthy of it. Probably the prophet is one of them. Right now, as I see it, in more likelihood, the prophet is one of them, one of those unworthy psychics. Siguro bilang gante, the prophet uh, brainwashes Yuya like this, telling him that the world is coming to an end that the, the Kiriharas are 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 disturbing the balance so to speak ito namang si Yulia paniwalang paniwala these three gearships are now telling me that they will all play a role in the final three episodes of this anime lalo lalo na yung uh, the part where yeah the final scene that part where Naoya accidentally drops the cryptic notebook. Siguro hindi niya alam na na ilaglag niya to. The way I see it, the SWE will get their hands on this. Uh, knowing the knowing the resources the SWE has, ma ma decrypt nilang lahat ito. The war between the Korokis and the Kiriharas will only get even worse after this. Plotwise, malinis. There's only one continuity here. The continuity that is happening in the physical earth. I believe you we will play will also play a role in this war. Kasi binanggit siya ng cryptic notebook. Kasi binanggit din si yo si Mrs. Tachibana. Binanggit din ang mga Oroki. Obviously kasi mukhang Alam na ng mga Kirihara ang mangyayari. Mukhang nabasa na nila lahat ng, ng nasa loob ng notebook na to. Because they're the only ones who can read it. 
the plot is this clean it will make you realize all these things it will make you deep dive into this episode and i love it <laughs> pace flow and plot i almost wasn't able to distinguish one from the other it is that fucking good an episode what do we need to expect oh by the way hindi pala final three episodes final four episodes kasi episode 8 pa lang tayo eh sorry so night 2041 episode 8 You could really feel it in your bones that the road to the finale has begun. Talagang umiinit ng bakbakan ng dalawang angka na to. And the way I see it, the Kurokis are willing victims to all of this. Yung, uh, yung mga palakad ng prophet. Because out of, yeah, out of utang na loob. Out of, uh, uh, this proverbial debt that they need to pay to the SWA for saving them. But if you've seen the episode, um, Takuya is beginning to doubt them. Say Anaman. The Kirehalas are about their age. Magkakaidad sila. Magkaidad si Takuya at si Naoto. Magkaidad si Yuya at si Naoya. How do they even exist in that timeline? Pano? So yeah, it really, really gets you to wondering. Right now, I don't know basically what the truth is. Kung totoo sinasabi ni Professor Mikoria or kung totoo or kung mas totoo ang, ang sinasabi ng Prophet ngayon. What the hell is going on? What is the real deal here? Ano ba talaga ang totoo? Big things are at play here. And the Kurokis and the Kiriharas are bonds in this chess match. Excuse me. If you want an overview of this entire anime, I can only describe it in two words. Chess match. The way I see it, this is a chess match between the psychics that were left behind in the physical earth and the psychics that got included for the psychic earth. It's the final four episodes. Let's just uh, let's just wait and see Maka lifestyle. So again, Night at 2041, episode 8. In typical Nighthead fashion and in the tradition of Tokyo Revengers and Fena Pirate Princess and Sunny Boy, no teasers. <laughs> Let's just do the drill, Maka lifestyle. Let's wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Twenty one, twenty one. Parang forever twenty one yun. <laughs> but anyway, next match: um, Pits, Niles, a team of um, Egyptian shamans, and X One, the first X Loss team to compete. Sino nandito sa X One? Marco, Lizard, and the big boss herself, si Jean. In case you guys are wondering who is that, uh, who's that little girl um, who always gets shown in the end credits, that is Jean. Umpisa pa lang, dominado na ng X1. Of course, Lizard starts off, but he hesitated in killing one of the Niles, yung, yung, yung team leader nila. Sino ang bumigil? Yung mismong... 
guardian spirit niya si um si Aphoria she just looked at Lizard and probably is saying you either stop this or I leave you you can tell that in her eyes then right there and then Lizard gets punished by Jean Kumaga, I think Marco threw Jean at him for punishment Eh, sinabi, na ni Ma- sinabi din ni Marco at uh, the same time. You still want to be one of us? Your punishment comes later. I'm disappointed in you. Who steps up now? Si Janna. Ayun, nagpakita ng lakas. This is how a God-class shaman fights. So, una, we've seen how do it. But, on the side of the x loss etong si Jean. This is their God-class shaman. Wow, she she showed no mercy. She kills all three members. Nakakatakot yung uh, yung yung guardian spirit niya si si Shamash. I think he is the Mesopotamian god of justice. Yun ang yun ang, sa pagkakalam ko. Shamash was the basis of the Code of Hammurabi. Therefore, the Code of Hammurabi is the foundation of the ex laws. Talagang, you commit a serious crime, you're put to death. That's oh, that's the basic principle of the Code of Hammurabi. Death is always the penalty for a crime. Kaya, yun ang, yun ang sinusunod ngayon ng ex-laws. So, we now know kung anong pinaghuhugutan ng ex-laws. To tell you honestly, mga ka-lifestyle, this wasn't expounded on in the original series. Yung, 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 Pundasyon mismo ng ex loss Studio Bridge had John explain it. Ayun na. While she was um, while she was brutally killing these um these these Egyptian shamans. And would you believe, tatlong magkakaibang oversold pa ang ginamit niya. Eee! And wow, kawawa ang Niles. Brutal lumaban itong si John. And Final scene. Everyone on uh, Yo's inner Yo and his inner circle were practically uh, reassessing their thoughts on what just happened. Kahit si kahit yung grupo ni How na, na nanood din, medyo confused. Si How lang hindi. <laughs> Going back to Yo and his inner circle. Talagang sabi ni Ren, it's only logical that. The next Shaman King should be should be strong. Sabi naman ni Ana, uh, she's arrogant. Ngayon, sabi naman ni um kinonsulta naman ni Rio Sio on his opinion on the matter, sabi lang ni Yo, I will become the Shaman King. Pagka sabi niya ni Yo, that sent chills up my spine. Okay? For a carefree main protag to to um to to be confident of this one while he was saying it that makes shaman king shaman king talagang when push comes to shove talagang seryoso si yo hello my name is john big boss of the x loss you're dead now <laughs> so let's break this episode down ard style pace Umpisa pa lang ng episode, medyo tense na. Dahil may magbabakbakan na namang dalawang team eh. Yun na, uh, Niles at ang X1. So, medyo, ito, itong X1 na to, medyo malakas na to eh. They have Marco and their um, and their supreme leader, si Jean. Who is in case, kaya nga siya, kaya tinatawag siyang Iron Maiden Jean because she steps out of this Iron Maiden. It is... It is a medieval torture device na kapag nilagay ka doon, sigurado kamatayan lang ang ang magliligtas sa'yo. Now, you either well, you either die or tell the truth. Yun lang yun. <laughs> Kasi may mga eh, may mga may mga panaksak sa loob yun eh. Once, once the executioner and once the um once uh, the person assigned to torture you slams that front door, maralamdaman mo. 
tutusok-tusok na sa katawan mo. That's how the Iron Maiden works. And for a little girl like Jean to be in this um to be in this devilish torture device that is disturbing. <laughs> Tapos nakakadena na pa siya. Tapos pinadlock. Nakapadlock pa. Talaga wala siyang labas doon. Now, the reason what well, she explained it in the ep- in in this episode. The reason why she is she has herself encased in this Iron Maiden is because to remind her of the sins of man. Tapos um you're going to face you're going to place the death penalty on every crime. That's why the Code of Hammurabi has been obsolete for thousands of years now. It is too extreme a law. Not all crimes can be meted the death penalty in reality. So this is what the pace of this episode will make you realize. You got a history lesson. Flow na man. First gear shift here was when Hmm. Euphoria yung Garden Spirit ni Lizard siya mismo tumigil sa atake. So, well, Lizard was about to kill the the team leader. Talagang ano na uh, pumorma na siya para patayin. Pero tumi ang talagang ang nagkusang tumigil si Euphoria. We all know his guardian spirit is the one controlling his pendulum. Kaya, kaya kung, kung, sa, kung sa saan napupunta yun eh. If that were the preliminaries, talo na si Lizard. But, no. Someone has to either die or submit. Ganun lang yan. Ganun lang dito sa totoong summon fight. So, ito yung ginagalit ni Marco. And of course, si Jean. So, sabi ni Jean, umalis ka na dyan. You're weak. What does this gear shift tell us? Simple. Hindi pa kaya ni Lizard ang ang pumatay ng tao. Deep inside. But he is he is one confused brat. Kasi oh, what? Mabait lang sa kanya, mabait lang sa kanya talaga si Yo. Kung sa iba 'yon, wala na. Taing kabayo na siya. Pero but to you, he just explained this to um to Manta kasi tinatanong nga sa ni Manta tungkol dito eh. Wala akong magagawa Manta. If this is his choice, then so be it. But if he kills someone, I will never forgive him. Those were Yo's exact words. I guess Lizard is is not yet cut out to be an ex-law because you know how the ex-laws operate. Konting kibot lang papatayin ka nila. Whether you're uh, one of house minions or not, wala silang pakialam. That's how ruthless the ex-laws are. He doesn't have this brand of ruthlessness inside him. And it showed in that gear shift. Final gear shift was when Jean finally uh, shows herself. Siya na nagtapos ng laban. Imagine, you're a shaman having this powerful a guardian spirit and you can wield at least four oversouls in one go. Apat na oversoul yung nakita ko rito. So, nagamit na lahat yon At yung huling tatlo, sabay-sabay pa niyang ginamit. That's a god class shaman. So, what does this gear shift tell us? For Team Yo, they got their work cut out for them. Nakita na nila kung ano ang kayang gawin ng Jean na to. Well, they were there. They were watching. It's not just um, Yo's team, but also Team Terence. Sy- Siyempre, y- yan ang inner circle ni Yo eh. When they're not competing, they're still Yo's inner circle. So, talagang nakita nilang lahat. Eh, ang wala, ang wala lang doon kanina si, ano, si Faust. Si Faust lang nakahulang doon. Yo and the gang may be in over their heads. Sa oras na, ma, na makakalaban nila ang X1. They might lose their lives with this uh with this shaman. They might lose their lives against this team. But if they're if they intend to do some character development on their own, they got to do it now. Hindi birong kalaban nitong si Shan. 
She is not the big boss of the X-Loss for nothing. Nakita ni ni Hal to. Uh, may, uh, now, did you see the look on Hal's face when nung nakita rin niya kung, pa, kung ano kayang gawin ni Jean? Okay. Medyo, medyo, medyo nakangiti pa siyang ganun eh. Sadista talaga ang demonyong to. <laughs> sadista. Pang sadista yung, yung, yung ngiti niyang yun. That just goes to show you how, how villainous how is. And that's what this gearship will also tell you. Kaya, these two gearships, ako na nagsasabi sa inyo mga kalaistan, they will play a role down the line in this reboot. Now that we all know na the girl appearing in the end credits uh, as, of, uh, as of late, si Jean Yun. Si Jean Yun. Like, uh, like, he's, like she's praying in a church. That's Jean. Bloodwise. Malinis. Squeaky clean plot. Bakit? This is no time to singe in a side story or even a flashback moment. We're going to get acquainted with another major character of, of Shaman King. Yan. The supreme leader of the X-Loss, si Jean. You cannot afford to um to to make the audience veer away from this particular plot. Ah ah, bad idea. <laughs> it's a fucking bad idea. Yeah, you have to make the plot as cool as clean as possible para maramdaman mo kung gaano kalupit ang founder ng uh, yeah, founder and supreme leader ng X Loss. At kung ano ang pinaghuhugutan ng organisasyon na to. Now we know. It's the Code of Hammurabi. Probably the most ruthless set of laws ever written in human history. Because there is only one punishment for every crime. You cannot just um, meet out the death penalty for every crime. E paano kung um, nagnako lang ng pagkain? Or or nagmura lang or um to call this something uh, less crime um may sinapak lang dahil nagalit ano ano death penalty ka ah uh-uh. there's there's no justice in that so you have to meet out a proper punishment for every crime hindi dapat one one punishment kasi ang Code of Hammurabi one punishment fits all na na set of laws ito but over time it has been it has been super uh, superseded it has been deemed obsolete by later laws yan uh, uh, the Ten Commandments and of course Roman law Greco-Roman law and um, of course the, the law the laws made it out by the Catholic Church yeah, mga ganyan I tell you guys the foundation of the X-Laws is based on the Code of Hammurabi the most ruthless set of laws ever written if you're yo in his inner circle talagang mapapalaban kayo sa X-Laws kamatayan lang ang ipaparusa sa inyo so Pace, flow, and plot. I almost didn't distinguish one from the other. It's that fucking good an episode. <laughs> and surprise! Jean is now here. So, Shaman King 2021, episode 21. Isip pa. Ayusin ko na lang yung buko. Oh! Two thumbs up! Excuse me. I always get excited when um when a major character of Shaman King is introduced because I know what's uh what what role this character is going to play down the line. Like I said, uh like I was saying all the time, Makalai style. I have already seen the original series. Twenty 
more than 20 years ago. I already have an idea of how the storyline is going to um, it's going to go down. But here in the reboot, yeah, I just surprise ako. Kasi hindi pinakilala si Jean ng ganito in the um, in the original series. And nakita ka agad dito yung weakness ni Lizard that would probably kick him out of the X-Loss kung hindi siya kung hindi siya kakaayos. His show of weakness has played a role in the original series and it will also play a role here in the reboot based on what we just saw in episode 21. Excuse me. In the original series, hindi inexplain nang mabuti ko ano yung pinaghuhugutan ng X-Loss. But here, that's explanation enough. And we get to we get to have a history lesson. <laughs> At least for me. Kaya, I still give it the two thumbs up. Na deep, na deep dive ko ang episode na to. Just wait for the next episode and see what uh, and see how how this whole Shaman fight is going to progress in this reboot. So again, Shaman King 2021 Episode 21 Two thumbs up Another two thumbs up For this great reboot Mga lifestyle Excuse me again Title of the next episode Has been teasered <laughs> Ang ganda lang muna So let's just do the drill Mga lifestyle You know it We will wait for next week And watch that episode In the meantime Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Patayang umaatig ako na naman. Wow. Let me recollect my thoughts on, uh, on what on what transpired in this episode. Give me a moment, mga kalaista. Alright. So, opening scene is where we left off in episode 10. Satoko bashing the shit out of her Uncle Tepe. Poor Tepe. <laughs> After doing the literal dirty work, uh, naligo muna siya to, well, daming dugo eh. Clean herself up because she's about to get picked up by Rika. Sabay siya napupunta sa Wat Watanaga si Festival. This was actually several scenes from uh, episode... I think episode 11. I think the same episode 11. Sato ko grabs Keichi by the hand. Pumunta sila doon sa isang parang mini park. At doon sinabi niya na uh, gusto niya maging kapatid si Keichi. So, may, may nabibigay sa kanya. So, pumunta sila sa bahay ni bahay nila Sato ko. True to his word, on on watch si Uishi. Gumagano na nga eh. Sobrang katin ng araw eh. Kita niya na magkasama sila Keichi at Satoko na pumasok sa bahay. Then, iniwan ni Satoko dun sa kwartong pinagpatayan niya ng kanyang uncle na binuksan ni Keichi ang ilaw. Ayun, nakita. Wow! Tepe was, um, was head first on the floor. His brains bashed in. Then, from behind, whack! Siya naman ang pinaghahataw ni Satoko with that same baseball bat. Patay rin siya! Let me remind you mga ka-lifestyle. Sato already knows what's going to happen here. Kaya, ang ginawa niya, pagkapatay niya kay Keiji, she screams as if she needed help to po si Uishi. So, nakita rin ni Uishi to. At, basically, Sato ko gave her, gave her story which actually happened in that episode of season 1. Kung, kung paano nagpatayan si Tepe at si Keiji. So, kumbaga, Pinalalabas niya na kwento lang niya ito. Then, ayun. in na ni Wishi na, okay, totoo ang curse. Ngayon, dinamay pa ni Sato ko si Rika. As in, uh, pinapalabas niya ngayon kay Wishi na, ito ang nag-utos kay Kichi na gawin ito. Pumunta ka agad si Kichi sa Watanaga si Festival. Ayun. He first attacks Rika. Dito, sinakal. And lead na bata eh. So, ginunumpan niya sa ere. May nakialam na may nakialam na, na dalawang villagers so, sabi, uy, bitaw mo yan, bata, bata lang yan binara niya yung isa 
Then the twins Sato ah Sato ko. Sean and Mion try to help. They two got shot in the head. Tinatanong ni Uwishi kay Rika. Oh, this is this is exactly what happened in the next episode of season one. That uh, after this one, siguro episode 12 or 13 na yon. Hindi ka pa magsasalita tungo sa curse nito. Ang sinasabi lang ni Rika, just end it. So nabuisit si Uwishi. Binagsak na sa sa lupa si Rika. Yun, pinagpapano ng baseball bat yung ulo. So she died. Then, Satoko is already on the festival grounds. Ayun, nakita niya lahat. Sinabi lang niya kay Uishi, Ang bagal mo naman pumatay, Mr. Uishi. Right there! Dinijuice na kagad ni Uishi na si Satoko ang talagang nag, uh, inutos ni Uyashiro sa mga nagawin lahat ito. Inamin naman ni Satoko. Before Uishi could actually shoot her in the head, Satoko shoots him in the head first. Wow, talagang... The witness to all of this surprise, Sirena. After seeing that Rena saw all this, Satoko pulled the gun on herself. Binari niya sa rin niya. Final scene. While all of this was happening, Iwa was at her entertained self. Talagang pinagtatawa niya ang lahat nito. Then she turns to a fragment. Nandun. Mukhang nanonood din si Hanyu Yung gumabay naman kay Rika Tinanong naman niya kay Hanyu What are you gonna do now, you pathetic failure? You can't see the fragments yourself May witness pala itong si Hanyu Kaya pala Hindi niya nakikita yung mga nangyayari doon sa mga fragments It's not in her Job description Pero si Iwa, nakikita niya lahat Whew! Again, it makes you want to think Who's the real villain here? Satoko or Iwa? <laughs> Let's break this episode down now ARD style Can't wait to dig in Pace! Umpisa-umpisa pa lang Pence na <laughs> Inatural, nagpapatayan na naman Vintage Higurashi The brutality is there And the pacing will make you see that What else can I say? <laughs> Flow naman. Well, first gear shift here was um was when Satoko has finally cleaned herself up. Ayun, duma- perfect timing. Nandun na si Rika para su- uh, sunduin siya for Watanaga si. So, sabay na sila. Why did I call this a gear shift? Because this will trigger the events of what happened in that episode in season 1. That's why um many fans now call Season 2, The Answer Arc Because this will answer nearly all of the questions posed in Season 1 Talag- Pero, talagang pinalalaman si Sato ko dito na siya ang may kagagawan ng lahat ng to Because she wants to keep Rika in Hinamizawa You never thought Sato ko would be a villain <laughs> That's what this gear ship will make you realize Second gear ship was when Detective Uishi rushed to Satoko's aid. Ayun, nakita niya na parang patay na sila, sila Keiichi at Tepe. Na uh, pinalalaban pinilal- si Satoko na nagpatayan ng dalawang to. But in reality, she killed Tepe first, then Lord Keiichi there, pinatay naman niya si Keiichi. Same manner, baseball bat. What does this gear ship tell us? Simple lang. Satoko is this evil already Na idadamay niya Ang isa sa mga best friend niya Sa kanyang plano Na well, Talaga walang kinalaman to sa Keiichi it, may, it also makes you think that So sino na ba mga naturukan niya Ng Hinamizawa Syndrome Virus Si Mion Si Rena Si Uishi So don't tell me by the way it looks, Keiichi's up next. If this happens, we're going to see a lot of questions answered. Especially during the time that he went on a rampage na may hawak din siyang baseball bat. Pinagpapate niya lahat ng tao sa restaurant with, with that baseball bat. You remember that episode, guys? That was episode... Um, teka. 14 or 15. 
Doon siya nagwala. You remember that episode? We probably might get the answers also here. But remember, this is all according to Satoko's plan. A grand plan. That's what this gear shift is, will also tell you. Now, final gear shift is of course the final scene. So, again, again, Eva finds this so amusing. I think she finds uh, humor in the violence of men. I think she finds she finds violence humorous. To Iwa, the bloodier, the funnier. And mukhang nanon, mukhang pinanonod, mukhang pinapapanood din niya si Hanyu. What everything, well, well this was going on. Kasi nga nakaganon si Hanyu eh. Pinakita sa final si parang parang nagdadasal eh na matigil na. Grabe. Just goes to show you that Satoko's evil, it's because of Iwa's evil. Talagang, siguro pinlano niyang lahat ito. Halatang halata na. That's what this gear shift will make you realize. Now, these three gear shifts well, have, yeah, have made an impact in this episode. I got a 50% feeling that the, the second and third gear shifts will play a role in the final four episodes of season two. The way I see it, kasi nagkakaroon ng exposure si Hanyu. And we all know that Hanyu is Rika's guide towards all of this. Nung siya ang pinaubayan ng curse ni, Oya- ni Oyashiro-sama. So the way I figure it, magkakasago pa sila sa ato kot Rika rito. As seen in the opening uh, in the opening credits see that scene where in a uh, parang parang nag naging naging dalawang mag, naging naging dalawang nagumpugang ilaw sila doon that's a good indication that the finale will go down to Satoko versus Rika and it's slowly well based on the final scene alone it's slowly looking that way Plot lies. Malinis. Bakit? Pwede ba sabihin planchado? Pero, the way this, the way uh, Pasoni presented this episode, as if yung, yung nangyaring side story nun in, I think, episode, episode 13 or 14 of season 1, they made it an entirely new episode for this one. Kasi, pinakita rito yung pinagmulan ng pagwawala ni Detective Uishi. Dito pinakita yun. Again, fueled by Satoko Slice. If you can't keep it in your minds that Satoko is um, the main architect of Season 2, of all the events here, you're probably not getting Season 2. Stop watching it. I strongly suggest you're just wasting your time. Kasi, hindi ka na makapag-isip. <laughs> That's what the plot will make you realize. Ganong kalinis ito. It will make, it will, this episode will easily pass off as a new episode. Kasi, pinakita rito talaga yung, yung pinagmulan ng galit ni Uishi. Bakit ganong-ganon lang niya pinatay si, Ki, si Rika in season 1? Dive, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Kaya again, sa sabi ko sa inyo mga lifestyle, malinis ang plot ng episode dato. So pace, flow, and plot, I almost didn't distinguish one from the other. It is that fucking good. It is that brutal. Pihado, you can check. Uh, you can check YouTube right now or even or even Twitter or even any other video sharing platform. Kita nyo, trending na naman ang Higurashi Sotsu. So, Higurashi Sotsu episode 11. Wow. It's one of the most brutal episodes of season 2. Two thumbs up. Excuse me. Wow, I haven't done that 
uh, that water drinking scene in, in the past two weeks already. <laughs> First time only. It is getting more brutal by the episode. Starting from probably episode, yeah, previous. And it will probably get more brutal than this. Kasi, Road to the Finale! I got those Road to the Finale feels a while ago when I was reviewing this, when I was watching this episode. Talagang naramdaman ko na na malapit na matapos ang season 2 ng Higurashi. The way I see it, magkakasago pa sila Sato at Rika rito. And, by the way, Hanyu was praying like that, at habang pinanonood din siya ni, ni Iwa, I think there's a good indication that Hanyu now knows what is actually going on. And siguro, titimbrihan niya ngayon si Rika. And, well, uh, I don't know about you guys, but if Rika finds out, she will be pissed off as hell. Hell! has no place for Satoko once this happens. I assure you. So, final four episodes, tutok na, mga ka-lifestyle. Tumutok na kayo. So again, Higurashi Sotsu, episode 11. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for Higurashi Sotsu, mga ka-lifestyle. Nakailang two thumbs up na ba ang season 2? Teka, so naka-11 episodes na. Sampu na, 10 straight. Kasi ang pilot, I only gave it the one thumb up. Medyo hindi ako, medyo hindi ko pa gets nun yung, yung overall flow ng, I didn't foresee yet the overall flow of season 2. Kaya, paano na the next episode has been teasered? Hmm. Hope we can still get those roll to the finale feels in, in the next one. So let's just do the drill. We wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, mga ka lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Hmm. Looks like it's backstory time for uh, Yamabiko, yung aso. As per the previous episode, nag agree silang apat na to go out on their own journey of discovery. So, habang hinihintay nila si Nosomi, nagsimula na magkwento ng kanyang nakaraan, si Yamabiko. Here, his original form was human. And he met this girl named Kodama. Uh, well, this girl had an awesome power. The power to, to direct things. In one scene, nung kausap niya si Yamabiko, she actually turned day into night. Para naggagalaw lang ng kamay ng reloy, para ginanoon lang. <laughs> As if she was just adjusting the hands of a grandfather clock. Isang ganoon lang. They instantly turned into night. Wow! One day, a uh, an epidemic came to their came to their world. We're in Lahat ng, ano yata, lahat ng negative thoughts ng isang tao nagkikristalize. Lumalabas in the form of a crystal, uh, crystal-like crystal tumor. Halatang tumor eh, kasi pag, uh, there, uh, there was one scene na mag-usap sila Yamabiko at si Kodama, dumugo yung isang tumor niya. Dito, basta, basta tumulo na lang yung dugo. Kumbaga, in our in our current times na nag-contact tracing ang community. Na trace lahat nito sa isang tao lang who, who was wearing a um uh, pa- parang ano siya eh? Parang parang dayo lang doon, haratang dayo uh, wearing a um a grass robe of sorts and uh, and a uh, any traveler's hat. Tapos marami siyang medalya na nakasabit doon sa robe niya. Later on in the episode, inamin niya na saan nagdala ng sakit na to dito. But, um, further into the episode, he reveals that Yamabiko is the actual cause of all this. It is not actually a disease, but a product of Yamabiko's mind. Kumbaga, 
um, he brought this world into this this world. Gulo, no? With that, uh, well, he he gave Yamabiko his name. His name is War. Okay, so medyo, uh, the moment he told him his name, medyo, ko, parang, uh, tumayo ba lahibo ko eh. During the course of this epidemic, he loses Kodama. Kasi in the, in the end, namatay si Kodama. And uh, he, they, each, they made a promise to each other na one of them would um, come out of his or her shell and just fly away. So, when his story ended, um, Nagara, kasi si Nagara si mismong kasama niya nun, um, Nagara asked himself, Can I do... I wonder if I could do that too. Eh, well, Yamabiko was confident that he can do it. So, nireasure naman siya ng veterano si Yamabiko. Final scene. They were able to meet up with Nosumi, pero, <laughs> nagririklama si Nosumi na super late sila. By two weeks. Eh, yung bala, hindi, hindi magkapareho ang oras sa mga cellphone nila. So, Paano nangyari yun? And eventually, k- kinwento na rin ni... Kinwento na rin lang tatlo kung ano yung kinwento ni... ni Yamabiko sa kanila. Kinoso, uh, kinwento na rin lang lahat kay Nosumi. So, sabi ni Nosumi, So, we gotta... We, we gotta look out for this war guy. Ano ba ang... Ano ba ang pake ng war na to? Sinabi na ni Yamabiko, He is out to kill God. Pero... Ang rebattle naman ni Nagara ay ganito. Even if we're able to kill God, will that change anything? Wow. Looks like Nagara is starting to starting to deep dive into uh, into the situation they're they're in. Mukhang gumagana na itong itong utak ni Nagara in ways we've only seen now. So let's break this episode down ARD style. Pace. Uh, I gotta admit, it's um, um, it was slow. Okay, I, I had a sleeper moment in this episode. Mga lifestyle. Uh, I'm being honest with you right now. I had a sleeper moment in this episode. Talagang medyo gumano na ako. I think once or twice. Hindi ko matandaan eh. But I had a sleeper moment because the pacing was. I think it was um I don't know, uh, I don't know if, it's, if it's just me or it was the intent of the animators to make it this slow. Kasi it's totally unfamiliar territory the pacing of this particular episode. We all know that Sunny Boy uh, the pacing of each episode of Sunny Boy is medyo fast kasi papalit-palit ng scene and if it were to to show a flashback, talagang flashback. It's just, uh, it's just one or two seconds. Ganon kabilis. But right here, I don't know if it's just me or Yamabigo's backstory is a little bit boring. I'm having mixed feelings about the pacing because well, nakatulog ako sa episode na to, at least once. But at the same time, there's something to somewhat look forward to on this road to the finale. This is episode 8, and Sunny Boy is just a 12 episode run, so the road to the finale starts here. The way I see it, well, I gotta give the pacing a little bit credit for this. It made us, it made, it made me realize at least that there's an enemy to look forward to. We all thought it was Hoshi. Nope. And uh, Aki wreaked havoc. But, it's only up until episode 7, and until episode 6, that she wreaked havoc. Na tala, talagang, she was, she was the villain of this show. Now, after a two episode break, we got to see, an, we might see another big bad in this anime. His name is War. I am now treating this backstory of Yamabiko as a warning. Dahil, 
Ilan na lang magsilang bida? Let's run it down. Si Yamabiko, of course, si Nagara, Misoho, at si Nosomi. Tandaan nyo mga ka-lifestyle, wala na sa circle nila si Rashdani kasi nagsarili rin siya. And Asakase did the same thing. So, kumbaga, no, solo flight si Asakase. So, it's only... One, two... Yeah, it's only the four of them. If this war guy is uh, as cold as as cold and calculating as Hoshi and uh, is a bit of a master instigator like Aki, patay ang mga bida natin. <laughs> they're gonna have their um They're gonna they're gonna experience an apocalypse of sorts if they if they come face to face with with, with this guy named War. Kumbaga, itong backstory na to talagang masasabi mong uh, warning na ito from Yamabiko na sooner or later they, they, they will they will cross paths with this guy with this uh, with this particular drifter kaya uh, I gotta give credit where credit is due so the pacing again made me realize that we're probably up against another big bad tamang tama road to the finale na Flow naman. First gear shift here was the that particular scene where Yamabiko started to to narrate his backstory. This gear shift is telling us that even dogs have their day. <laughs> Aso ngayon si Yamabiko eh. It's arguably high time to to tell his new friends how he became this and how and well, and what he has been doing for the past, at least for the past 5,000 years. Or, and, or, at least tell them the most significant part of his journey. Siguro ito yun. When he met uh, Kodama. This gearship will also tell you that um, it's a vast universe. Marami pang dimension ang hindi pa nila nakikita. It confirms the fact that anything can still happen. Even... The time they they will cross paths with war. Uh, I'm feeling kind of prophetic right now, but mm, war may again show himself somewhere somewhere in the final four episodes. Yun ang kutub ko. Dalawang gear shift lang nakita ko. Final gear shift was during the final scene. So nag, nakita nakita kits na ang mga ambarkada. Then they, they sit by the fireplace enjoying marshmallows. And yun nga, kinwento na rin ni kinwento na ni lahat kay Nosomi kung ano yung ikinuwento ni Yamabiko. So so sabi ni Nosomi. Bah. By the way, Nosomi um as uh, this as well reacted to Yamabiko's backstory, parang a bit excited siya and apprehensive kasi they just dealt with team Aki with Asakase by her side kumbaga nilaglag sila ni ano eh nilaglag sila ni Asakase by joining Aki they're probably still reeling from that uh, deep inside and now with Yamabiko's backstory they, they need to expect this kind of a guy that they might cross paths with who knows? As long as they're drifting from world to world, there's a there's at least a 40% chance that they might bump into this guy. That's what this gearship is telling me. These two gearships that I saw, especially the last one, will play a role in somewhere in these last four episodes. Yeah, about that. Although, whoa. Well, Again, um, I had some sleeper moments in this episode. Plot-wise, Plotchado, bakit? It's a backstory episode. So, you really need to iron out the first third and the, and the final third with the middle third of the episode, which consists of Yamabiko's entire backstory. Well, at least, I think, I think it's the most cherished part of his uh, of his journey, of his 5,000 year journey. 
Kaya yun, kaya siguro yun ang yun ang yun na muna ang ikiniwento niya sa tatlo. With all backstories comes sleeper moments. Nearly all backstories have sleeper moments. Ako, I just had one. I gotta uh, I gotta admit it to you, mga ka lifestyle. There was one point in his backstory that really uh made me made me drop my made me uh tilt my head like that. It was still um ironed out real good. So much as to uh to make you wake up and oh so ito pala yung ito pala yung source ng epidemic na to itong mukhang na to abay mukhang eh, mukhang, mukhang di gagawa na mabuti and wow did you if you seen the episode did you see how um how how war um lied to Kodama's face about her beauty kasi una sinabi niya na pangit ito si Kodama pero act- Actually, no, she's not. Kodama just asked him later on that, Bapo naman, naman sinabi yun? Remind you guys, his name is War. So, medyo ako, medyo nag... Nagkaroon ako ng... Medyo tumindig ang balahibo ko. Because, if you would go back to the Book of Revelation, this is how uh, one of the four horsemen would, uh, would instigate chaos into the world. If you, if you don't believe me, grab a Bible right now. Take a look at the book of Revelation about the four horsemen of the apocalypse. This is how war will start. Instigation. If you want to start a war, you need to instigate something. Whether consciously or unconsciously. But this is a dangerous guy to, uh, to, be, to be bumping into. And by all indications from Yamabiko's backstory... Team Nagara should be should be careful that or should prepare for this guy. That's what this plot is telling me. My dog is Jack. So pace, flow, and plot they came together for this episode. Although, yeah, my primary complaint is that the start of Yamabiko's story, uh, I. I had a sleeper moment there. I almost did not get those road to the finale feels in this episode. Ilang masasabi ko for now. So, Sunny Boy, episode 8. <sighs> Gotta be objective. What's up? Here's the trouble I had for the first part of Yamabiko's story. Uh, I'll tell you right now. It's a lot like Nagaras. Kasi yung pinagmulan ni... Uh, yung pinagmulan ni... Halos ha, halos. Yung pinagmulan ni Yamabiko is yung pinagmulan ni Asakase. But, he was he was like that dahil mababa ang kanyang self-esteem, mababa ang tingin niya sa sarili niya. Just like Nagara when this whole anime started. Kaya sinabi kong, it's a bit like Nagaras. Yung pinagmulan ni Yamabiko. Ang feeling ko kanina, kasi kanina ko lang napalod eh. Was, parang inulit, parang, parang inulit lang nila yung origin story ni Nagara. But if you look at it now, you would be happy for Nagara if his, uh, if his character has truly progressed. But not to the level of Yamabiko. But yeah, he's getting there. Kasi in assurance niya niya mabiko eh. That I know you're gonna get there. In essence, yun na sinabi niya kay Nagara during this episode. Pero in all indications from this episode overall, Team Nagara should be prepared for war. Uh, not for not yung literal na war, but the guy named War. Yung halos na kasagupa ni Yamabiko. This guy's dangerous. He is a more dangerous instigator than Aki. And, at ang pangalan pa niya, War. One of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. To us Catholics, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, they are scary. The mere mention of any one of their names makes you want to just go down on your knees and pray to God. 
that it, that, that 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 they don't show up. <laughs> that's how um, that's how scary the four horsemen of the apocalypse are. They dive. So that's why I still that's why I still give this episode the one thumb up because it made it still made me deep dive. It's still a good anime. It's still a good episode. On this road to the finale, tutok na lang tayo mga ka lifestyle. So again, Sunny Boy episode 8. Want them up? Sorry Sunny Boy, your streak has been broken. Pero still a good episode. In typical Sunny Boy fashion, no teasers. Akala ko magtiti, ano ko naghihintay pa ako ng teaser kasi medyo Bago na yung ano eh. Bago na yung ED. Baka, magka, baka magka-teaser tayo ngayon. Nope, nope, nope. Wala. Wala pa rin. So, we'll just have to do the drill, mga ka-lifestyle. We will wait for next week and watch that episode. Road to the finale na po. Until that time, mga ka-lifestyle. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Mm. Kaya pala ganun ang final scene sa episode 9 Eh gusto na niya talaga bulahin itong si Dr. Moreau Kasi uh, Gamay na niyang ugali nito si, Gamay na ni Vanitas ang ugali nito Because the slightest form of flattery Magiging madaldal na si, Doc, si, si Moreau True to his plan, ayun, nagdadaldal na So, ang dami nilang nalaman That he's the one um, kidnapping those vampires for his experiments. And, of course, kung paano niya, paano niya naging test subject si Vanitas. And, of course, how the original Vanitas rescued those uh, former test subjects of his. Including a certain number 71. Na, sa huling part ng episode, kinumusta sa kanya ni Dr. Moreau habang patakas na si Moreau. Basically, Noy got impatient at diniretsa na si si Moro. Ano ba ang mga ginawa mo sa mga vampires na to? At kay Vanitas. Eh, pop, uh, ayaw na magsalita and all of a sudden, uh, the enhanced humans started attacking them. So, a fight in shoes! Then, merong biglang uh, dumukot kay, kay Moro si ano pala yun, si Spider isang yung agent ng Charlotte na nakasama ni Nainya during the assault on that uh, on that vampire's ball siyang dumukot kay Moro kumbaga isinasalba niya and dun, kinumusan ni Moro kay Vanitas si number 71 based on yung mga flashback moments na Va- Vanitas was having he knows number 71 very well at ang tawag niya sa Vampire of the Blue Moon na na nag-rescue sa kanila uh, father so tatay by the way the opening scene look mukhang yung original Vanitas ang nag-rescue sa kanila may kasama mang stop na ganun eh and let's go back to that fight sequence talagang all out then all of a sudden this um this Shadow, the monster, came out of us, came out of his, out of this particular door. Na talagang uh, lock shot. Kasi talagang ayaw palabasin ni ni Moro ito. It's too uncontrollable na. Nanong ninoy kung anong anong klase ito. Sabi ni Vanitas, curse bearer din ito. Pero mukhang kinakain na ng kanyang ng kanyang shadow. At medyo na hirap din ng mga chasers na pigilan ito. Sila sila Roland. So, Vanitas again gathered himself. Kinuwang, he gets the book. Sabi niya, sabi niya, Halika na! Let's rescue this. So, uh, so, bi, so binakapan sila ng mga chasor. So, pumasok sila sa bunga nga. Nakita nila yung pinaka curse bearer. Ayun, kinokontrol na. Kinokontrol nga talaga ng, ng shadow. So, Vanitas opens the book. And in an instant, they were able to rescue the curse bearer. So, nagamot na niya. After what just happened, pinagtawanan na lang nila Vanitas at Noy. Ang nangyari. But, bakit ko bilanggit? Kasi, 
Roland was watching them all along at mukhang napahanga siya sa dalawang to. So, later on, si inalok na niya kay Lanoy at Vanitas na sila na ang magto-turn over kay Count Orlock, yung itong, itong dalawang vampire na to. Sila na bahala. Basta ang importante, tumakas na sila. So, yun, pinatakas nga nila si Lanoy at Vanitas. And then another Chaser captain comes into the picture. His name is Olivier. Kumbaga, kumbaga parang superior ito ni Roland eh. So, ano ba ano, 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 Uh, whatever notions he's had uh, against vampires. So, oh, napailing na lang si, si Olivier. Final scene! It's actually a post-credit. Ako nga, nagulat ako eh. Na, may post-credit to? So, Spider reports to someone that um, Moro is... Moro cannot be talked to right now kasi medyo distraught sa nangyari sa kanyang laboratory kasi... Right after they were able to save this curse better, nagsasabuga na yung parts ng laboratory. So, napulasan na sila. So, he was reporting to this guy. This guy is Lord Rotven. So, sinabi na lang ni Lord, ni Lord Rotven, si Noy, Noy Arcevis, you'll have to deal with me now. Oh! So, what does this mean? Si Rotven ay kasangkot ng charlatan. It's not just Dr. Moreau. Pati si Lord Rotven. Talagang mapapalaban ngayon ang mga bida. Even the Chassors. Nako. Tumitin din ang road to the finale, folks. So let's break this episode down ARD style. I'm gonna dig right in. Pace! Pisa pa lang ng episode. Medyo na-tense na ako eh. <laughs> Because you don't know what's going to happen if Vanita starts talking. Kaya, up to lang, hindi, hindi natin talaga mag-get sa ugali nito. He's the quintessential anti-hero. He is so unpredictable. So, teka, hindi eh, ba, hindi ba gusto mong patayin si Dr. Moreau for, uh, for turning you into a guinea pig all those years ago? Ba't parang, ba't parang, parang, nakikipag-amenities ka na sa kanya? What's the deal, Manitas? Roland and the other Chassors, talagang, they really played along with Vanitas' plan. Kasi yun nga nangyari. So, chill lang ang mga, ang mga Chassors. So, while they're listening to tomorrow blurt out his um, his travesties, his, um, well, this is idiosyncrasies, the plan is working. It got a lot more tense in the post-credit, yung final scene. Ayun, putang ina, nalaman, nalaman natin. Si Rockwell pala, kasangkot ng charlatan. No wonder he was um, he was so curious about Vanitas. Meron na talaga, siya, talaga siyang intent na patayin si Vanitas right there and then. Dahil kasangkot niya ang charlatan. And, that was, and that's what the pacing of this episode will make you realize. Tang ina, korap pala tong, tong punyetang Rockwell na to eh. Looks like he's the real villain of this uh of this entire anime. Influence na politiko. He also has ties with the terrorist organization Charlatan. Promotor pala na terrorista ito. Vanitas and Noi will have their hands full. Luckily, they now have Roland and some chassors by their um, by their side. Kung maga nagpredge darin ang allegiance, eh. proverbially si Roland. Eh, tinulungan na kasi lang tumakas eh. So, it may, their, um, Roland's allegiance with them may prove handy in the, in the upcoming final two episodes. Flow naman! First gear shift was when Dr. Moral started talking. <laughs> Bakit gear shift? Simple lang. This is where Vanitas displayed his cold and calculating side. He will go to great lengths to to save curse bearers even through these kinds of uh, 
tactics. Kahit, kahit sa mismo gusto niyang patayin itong si Moro. He really wants to kill Moro himself. But, pero, medyo nagpigil siya all for the sake of information. Kasi baka meron pang, meron pang information si Moro na hindi pa nila alam. Na, na pwede niyang sabihin through, well, basta, basta i, basta i amenity siya ni Vanitas. So, yun nga nangyari. He practically told all <laughs> to Vanitas, Noy, and the Chassors. <laughs> so, advantages sa mga Chassors to because here's Dr. Moreau who was kicked out by the Chassors for questionable experimentation on humans. And years later, he's back in his old laboratory still experimenting on humans and now, vampires! If that ain't a gear shift to you, I don't know what is. <laughs> Second gear shift was when Spider rescued Moro. Bakit gear shift? Kasi it's now easy to to figure out uh, on who's on who Moro's backer now is. Siyempre hindi na ang Chasors, hindi na ang Catholic Church, kundi ang charlatan. E si Spider ang sumadba sa kanya eh. Eh, agent ng charlatan yan eh. So, it's obvious. Charlatan is also helping Dr. Moreau with his experiments. Hmm. So, tamang, tamang, uh, ang hinala ngayon ni Noy. That, well, Dr. Moreau is part of Charlatan. Final gear shift is of course the final scene. We now know ang political backer ng Charlatan, si Lord Rockven mismo. Wow! And he has the gall to to protect the queen's name and when he, when Valetas accused the queen of being a harborer of curse bearers tigas ng mukha mo tangina ka <laughs> eh ikaw pala ang kalaban eh what does this gear shit tell us? again it's simple Valetas and Noy are in over their heads now we know that Charlatan has a political backer ganitong kataas na politiko in the vampire world si Lord Rotvin mapapalaban sila dito Rotvin has already shown his power in episode 8 8 ano, episode 6 and 8 nagpakita na siya ng kapangyarihan nun his power is really disturbing at muntik na rin niyang itumba si si Vanitas twice well, one for each of the episodes I've mentioned na nagpakita siya ng kapangyarihan. He almost killed Vanitas twice. So, I hope it's not, I hope the third time's not a charm. Siguro during the finale, magkakasubukan na silang tatlo rito. Si Vanitas, si Noy, at si Rotfen. The I see it based on this, uh, on this final scene. These three gear shifts that I saw, I assure you mga lifestyle, it, these three gear shifts will play a role in the final two episodes. Or, it'll even spill over to season two once it, once it starts airing. Huwag na tayo magkunwarihan pa, mga lifestyle We know from the beginning that the case study of Vanitas is a split core series. First two episodes ngayong summer and siguro after, after this fall, winter of, at least winter of next year will be season two. So, these three gear shifts can either uh, determine the finale or will spill over to season 2. Lalo lalo na yung huli. Ngayon alam natin na kasangkot si Rock din dito. Tigas na mukha, no? Pinagtanggol pa niya ang pangalan ng Rina. <laughs> eh, eh, kurap din pala ang hayop na to. Eh, wow! <laughs> so, plot-wise... Ano pa, ang, ano pa ang masasabi ko? Despite the quick flag, flashback moments Vanitas has been having all throughout this episode, malinis pa rin ang plot. It's, it's a quick one or two seconds. All flashback moments that have been that have been shown here in this episode, it's not just Vanitas's. Just 
for you to get the point of what Vanitas is going through right now in this episode. What goes on in his mind based on what we ju- what what the plot just uh, handed to us for this episode. Ako ang dinidiyos ko rito. Hindi buong pusong iginawad sa kanya ang book ng unang Vanitas. The way I see it, mukhang ninakaw pa niya ito. The book, he stole the book. It wasn't it wasn't awarded to him. Mukhang ninakaw niya ito sa original na Vanitas. That, that, that's the way I see it. Based on what um based on the flashback moments that Vanitas has had in this episode. But it's only a deep dive of mine. Uy, deep dive. <laughs> So, that's what the plot will make you realize. Ganong kalinis kasi. The pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. I got those road to the finale feels in this episode. Talagang nagkakain, talagang... Vanitas and Noy are hot on the trail of Charlatan. And now, we know who their backer is. Putang ina si Lord Rodven pa. Isang malakas na vampire ito. At... Um, closest confidant of the queen right now. Dapat talaga ang advisor ng queen si uh, yung malita bata si uh, I forgot I forgot ah, I forgot his name. While that child cannot perform his functions, kasi ma bata pa si Rotven muna. Kaya si Rotven ang uh, malapit na kakampi ngayon ng queen ng vampires. To have someone this close to the queen as an ally. Whether you're Vanita Sinoy or your Charlatan, you got leverage. Right now, Charlatan has the leverage. So, talagang all things considered, dihado ang mga bida rito. Which makes the road to the finale more exciting. Mm. So, the case study of Vanitas episode 10. You know what he said? Good long episode. Eh. Oh, <laughs> two thumbs up. We're now down to the final two episodes of this anime. At least the um the first score. Okay, yung kumaga season one. I am slowly getting that um getting visions of what season two will be like. Now we know that Lord Rotvin is the um is the is is Charlatan's biggest ally. Charlatan ang pinakamatinding kalaban ni Lenoy at Vanitas dito. Sila ang promotor ng mga course bearer. And, of course, Vanitas and Noy are there to save them. So, it's a power struggle talaga. Nagmimistulang power struggle ang anime na to. Because of what happened or what has revealed, what has been revealed here in episode 10. We're still on the road to the finale and we're now down to the final two episodes. Kaya, kapit lang mga ka-lifestyle. So again, the case study of Vanitas episode 10. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this great anime, mga lifestyle. Oh, take us to mga mo, Rotten. Part of the next episode has been teasered. Ayoko naman ni Ayoko nang ano eh. Parang ayoko nang panoorin yung mga teaser for the next episode. Ah. But, whether I watch it or not, I'm still not going to trust it. I'm still not going to take their word for it. Kaya, let's do the drill na lang, mga ka-lifestyle. We will wait for next week and watch episode 11. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest, mga ka-lifestyle. Wow. Um, the enemies. Most bizarre episode, probably, because again, uh, they were going about their regular lives. Sila Ryue, Rena, at si Eri, kasi magkakaklase sila. They're they're all seniors, and they're they're going to the same high school. Wala nakapansin si Eri that they are some somewhat in this loop. So, paulit-ulit lang yung mga ginagawa nila at sinasabi. 
At ang sumunod na uh, nakapansin si Ryuhei. Then finally si Rena. So, medyo natunogan na sila ng dreamer. Pinatulog sila. Then second time, they realized that it was a loop. Ganon din na nangyari. Then, but in the third time, they uh, they found they found a way around it. So, nahanap ka ni, ni Ryuhei ang dreamer. Because he was hearing this clicking sound before they pass out. Naalala niya yung isa nilang kaklase named Sakawa. Every time he's pissed off, he fickles his mechanical pencil. Tinanong nila kay Sakawa, Did you take that solmium drop? Inamin. Confirmed he is the dreamer. So while this was going on, Jessica and Aruto even Tris were finding, were finding a way to get into the promenade. Kasi nasense nila na na may na may dreamer and they're trying to look for the portal pero wala sila makita then um, all of a sudden this um, Ryuhei had this idea of keeping himself awake by uh, having either of the girls cut him open kumaga sugatan siya ng kusa so ang gumawa si Eri sugatan siya nakita ni Sakawa sa bigla bigla siya nagwala sabi niya dugo don't let that in here ayun so bigla lumabas yung portal nakapasok sila Jessica um, Aruto at si Trace so nakita nila this so sinabi nila nila Rena this is the dreamer ayun sinabi ni, Aka, ni Sakawa hindi niya kilala itong tatong bagong pasok is inside his head was saying kill them all offer up your wish paliwala paliwala naman si ano si Sakawa he offers up his wish boom he becomes a Lissaria now the knocker ups had to deal with him right away final scene well wala na sila magagawa patay na si Sakawa put that mark on his head ibig sabihin mo patay na siya and pinulot na lang ni Ryo yung yung uh, mechanical pencil na naba, nabaling ni Sakawa and he just said what's so good about time standing still it's just another curse so you could see that that serious look on his face the way I see it he's now more hell bent in taking down the church so let's break this down ARD style pace excuse me so the pacing was slow only during the first half of the episode ito yung time na um, na figure out na nila Ryuhei kung paano ma matutuntunan yung dreamer the pacing was really good you could totally feel the um, the uh, the urgency of taking down this uh, this dream of well, saving this dreamer at the most because you know mindset na mga na mga locker up eh. save the dreamer first when but when push comes to shove take him down so ganun lang nakita natin sa on the, on the way they they, they took out the Desaria. Talagang all out sila. Kasi they assume it's, uh, it's hopeless na. Because once the dreamer offers his or her wish up, game over. They talagang clean up. Uh, when that Desaria appears, clean up mode na sila. So, if they wanna blame somebody, blame the church. Blame the hierarch. The pacing will make you hate the church even more. It will make you hate the evil ones even even more. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift here was when Eri realized that they're in a loop of sorts. Why did I call this a gear shift? Simply lang. It'll trigger the events of this episode. Yun lang yun. Second gear shift was when um. Tris, Aruto, 
and Jessica were finally able to get inside the school. Kasi, well, they really need to get into the action kasi baka in trouble nga naman yung tatlo eh. And, and after that, they still couldn't look for the portal leading to the dromery. So, but why did I call this a gear shift? Simply lang uli. You can now say that they are working as a team. This is what this gear shift will tell you. Final gear shift is the final scene. You can easily call this a gear shift. Bakit? Because Ryuhei said it well. Uh, when he explained the whole thing. What's so good in in time standing still? It's it'll just be a curse. So based on what Ryue said in this gear shift, you can now tell what the overall mindset of the Shibuya knocker ups is. Save the dreamer. And when all else fails, take the Take the desire down and fit the bill to the church later on. Parang ganun yan eh. So, there will come a time. Uh, if this, no, this gear shit made me realize it. There will come a time na money nigil na mga knocker up sa church. And the, the church is just adding up to their bill. Sabi ng isang character sa Doctor Strange. The bill comes due. This is what this gear ship will tell you. These three gear ships that I saw, especially the last one, will play a role in this anime. For down the line. So plot wise, Malinis. Although babagahama na mong um, side story yung loop. No, it's part of the episode. Talaga yung continuity na susunod pa rin. So. Malinis pa rin ang episode. Malinis pa rin ang plot na to. It made me deep dive. Episodes with clean plots make you tend to deep dive. So, pace, flow, and plot. I almost didn't distinguish. I almost wasn't able to distinguish one from the other. It's that good an episode. Tsaka, dito mo makikita sa episode na to, yung overall mindset ngayon ng na mga nakar up and talk about overall character develop talk about mass character development so this I draw the animation episode 9 If you're um, a casual anime fan, you might find this episode boring. But to see some anime fans like me, nope. The storyline of this episode is perfect. Bottom line, the knocker ups are up against basically the evil ones through the church. And the church will stop at nothing to, um, to advance their goals their ultimate goal of bringing back the evil ones and well they've just proven that here in this episode they found a um another willing victim si Sakawa kaklase pa naman nila nila Ryuhei Rena at ni Eri who's uh, been well who's been yeah who's been bullied you can say bullied even by her even by his own parents kasi masyado mong taas ang expectations sa kanya ng mga magulang niya as seen in that in that sequence where he confines the knocker ups to by, by using the school building itself wow that is scary imagine uh, a dreamer having this kind of uh, instability inside him And the church took advantage. Makes you hate this villain even more. Talagang you would really root for the knocker ups from here on end. Talagang halang ang bitukan ng organisasyon na to. 
after all, they're being fueled by the evil ones. They're the extension of the evil ones, and if they're the extensions, imagine what the evil ones can actually do. Deep dive. So again, this I terminate the animation episode 9. Title of the next episode has been teasered. Hmm. Bakit From downright serious to downright romantic. But I don't want to trust it. Now, in case you're wondering why I um, ended my parting shot abruptly. Rather abruptly. Kasi, um, I've seen the titles already for the next three episodes. But this doesn't. Uh, it's not conclusive evidence of how long this anime will run. The way I see it, it's going to do a Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens. Kumbaga, wala pa siyang definite uh, end. And well, based on the episode, based on this episode, mukhang hindi pa talaga magtatapos ang anime na to. So, let's just do the drill. We will wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, mga lifestyle Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. The aftermath of the blood Halloween. Bottom line. The episode started with um Kobaga Yeah. Flashback sequence Kung Pan Talaga Nabu Ong Toman. It all started pala when Kasutora was secretly fighting the Black Dragons on his own. Mababalabang ka talaga sa mga Black Dragon. Dahil nasa teritoryo ka nila. So, siguro ayo ayo lumugar si Kasutora. Ayun, nabubugbog parate. So, Mikey right there decided to form his own gang. On, well, basically on Baji's suggestion. Nagkaroon na siya ng kaganang pangalan. The Tokyo Manjiro Gang. Sabi nga nila pa, I'm done with forming our own gang, but the lame, but the lame name, come on. <laughs> Toto, pintas ka agad yung mga ibang, uh, yung mga iba. Grabe. So, well, sabi ni pa, Let's buy a charm to commemorate this. Ayun. Eh, yung charm pala na gusto nila, yung the charm for traffic safety. Kasi biker gang nga naman eh. So traffic safety is uh, is more uh, in tune with uh, with a uh, biker gang. Eh, mahal. So on, uh, on their own, they cannot buy a charm. Pero if by pitching in, mabibili nila ito. So, nabili nga nila. Sabi ni Mikey, oh, Baji, ikaw magtago nito. So, sabi naman ni Baji, sige, ahalagahan ko to. Fast forward to the plot Halloween. Hawak-hawak ngayon ni Mikey. Eh, we all know na namatay na si Baji. So, yun na nagpahalala kay Mikey kung paano at bakit niya binuo ang Toman. It was basically Baji's idea and si Baji na nagsabi na ang gusto niyang gang ay has this one for all, all for one mentality. Kung maga nasakta ng isa, kailangan rumes pa ang iba. Agree naman ang lahat. Especially si Mikey. So, yun ang... So, tumigil na talaga si Mikey sa... Well, on his intent to kill Kasutora. So, sabi na... May, may mga... May mga natira pa palang Valhalla doon na talagang tumigil. So... Everyone... Yeah, everyone went home. May pahabol wala si Kasutora. He just... Uh, he just begged for Mikey's forgiveness for both Baji and Chinichiro yung kuya ni 
yung queen ni Mikey na napatay ni Kasutora. Pero he doesn't expect um, Mikey's forgiveness right now. But all the same, he bowed for forgiveness. Uh, the blood of Halloween ended tragically. Naaresto uli si Kasutora and of course, namatay si Baji. Two weeks later, ayun, uh, Matsuno was there to pay his respects. And so sparks his own backstory. Pero it's just a quick one. Tanda nyo, mga ka-lifestyle. Tokyo Revengers has had its share of backstories and flashback moments. And none of them had sleeper moments. No. This one by Matsuno is no different. Practically a flashback moment. Kasi he's paying his respects to Baji. Yung lipingan niya. Pinakita na ito kung paano sila nagkakilala ni Baji. Uh, Baji was this nerdy kid in middle school. But when he got into trouble with a um, with a small biker gang named Mandala. Eh, kasi yung palang... Uh, kumaga... Yung isa niyang binugbog na senior doon sa eskwela nila. Eh, member pa na ng gang na to. So, well, one day, hinarang siya ng Mandala. And well, for this way, eventually he got um, the numbers caught up to him. Then all of a sudden, Baji shows up to help. So, ito namang leader ng Mandala. Sinabi niya kay Baji, Oy, ano ba magagawa mo? Tapos Baji cuts him off by, yeah, by basically punching his head into to the wall. <laughs> Dito na nagpakita ng lakas si Baji. Let's his hair down and lets it all out. Every single member of Mandala is down. So, talaga wow. Napabilib si Matsu Norito. At sinabi niya, sinabi ni Baji sa Mandala, kaibigan ko to, pakilaman niyo siya uli. May kalalagang kayo uli sa akin. So, nagpulasa na. <laughs> So again, well, through Baji, nagpakita ng lakas ang toman. And well, Matsuno just said, Baji was the first guy I ever showed respect to. And well, first guy I looked up to. Yeah, sinabi niya. And the rest, as they say, is history. At saka, well, sinabi rin ni Matsuno rito na kung paano um, kumbaga paano naging kapatiran ang Toman basically through yung samahan nila ni Baji kasi nung uh, they found out that they live in the same residential building si Baji sa 5th floor si Matsu na naman sa 2nd floor so eh, Baji invited Matsu over for basically for yakisoba eh, nakita ni Baji na na iisa na lang isang pakita na lang ng Uyaki Soba nandun sabi niya silis pa nga niya nanay niya <laughs> so sabi niya kay Matsu no let's split this that's where the um, uh, the notion of splitting the Uyaki Soba for Matsu no came, uh, came about nung namamatay na si Baji so yun naalala lang ni 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 Matsuno then Mikey came to pay his respects then while all of this was going on binisita pala ni nila Draken at Takemichi si Kasutora sa Juvie so ayun sinabi ni Kasutora na ayoko na naragang uh, babagawin ko na sarili ko rito hindi ko isisisi sa iba um, I'm uh, kumbaga well, Kasutora is practically uh, making himself accountable for everything that's happened in the blood Halloween yeah, namatay si Baji and well, for bringing all of this on Mikey's head so final scene uh, while Mikey was paying his, la- his respects to Baji's grave pinaabot ni Draken yung message niya 
So, he forgives Kasutora. So, uh, Kasutora breaks down in tears. Let's just break this episode down AR this time. Can't wait. Pace. The only time the pace picked up was when Baji was taking down Mandala all by himself. <laughs> Yun lang. The date pala of the Blood Halloween was October 31, 2005. So, hindi pala 2006 itong pinasok ni Takemichi, kundi 2005. Okay. That was the Blood Halloween. So, uh, I don't know, sino yung nagkwento? I think si, ano yata, si Takemichi. So, October 31st, 2005, the Blood Halloween went down. And it all ended with one arrest and one death. And yeah, the pacing is just right for an aftermath episode. Talagang ramdam mo na aftermath ito. Kasutora gets arrested again. And Baji dies. Pero on the side of Toman, walang ano eh, walang no casualties. So, may, mga, may mga injuries of course. Talagang nagpupugan eh. Eventually, yan, Toman won kasi when uh, when Mikey took down uh, took down Halma with just one kick eh, nagbulasan na yung ibe so an talaga naiwan doon yung mga yung mga higher ups ng ng Valhalla yun nga sila Hanma. and you could also see that um, dejected look on Kisaki's face mukhang yung plano niya eh Hindi na tuloy. That's what the pacing of this episode will make you realize. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift was the opening scene actually. Kasi uh, if you can if if uh, the final scene of episode 21 is still clear to you, this is a continuation. Kasi nag flashback lahat kay Mikey nung nakita niya yung charm. This was what this is what he was seeing. Yung pagpunta nila sa shrine and doon talaga nabuo ang Toman. At ang talagang nag, uh, nagbuo nito, si Bachi. Sinadjust lang niya kay Mikey na, wow, kasi nakita nila. Kasi bug, mukhang nabugbog na naman si Kasutora by the Black Dragons. So, sabi ni Bachi, bye, magbuo na tayo na sarili nating gang. A gang wherein uh, kapag nasaktan yung isa, re-res baka ng iba. Pumayag ang iba. And Mikey makes it official by giving it a name. <laughs> Although pathetic, Tokyo Manjiro Gang. <laughs> so eventually, naging, uh, the rest they say is history. So it eventually became the Tokyo Manji Gang. So, Toman. But it's now a name that everyone fears at, as of uh, 2005 after the Blood Halloween. Yan, talagang kinatatakutan ng Toman. Akala nyo ba naman? They went up against a 300-man 300, a 300 gang named Valhalla. At sila pang nanalo. Wow. That's what this gearship will make you realize. Kasi that flashback sequence that's a very important one kasi nakita natin kung paano nabuo ang Toman and um, created a series of events that will uh, that will spell Toman's future two years later kasi in the span of two years marami na yata silang gang na itinumba dalawa na nakita oh sorry final gear shift was during um the timeline was two weeks later nung uh, Matsuno was paying res respects to Baji. Then later on, Mikey came to pay his respects. Why did I call this a gear ship? Simply lang. Kasi the first division captain of Toman is now dead. One of the founders. So, what does this mean now to Toman? Simply lang. Bakante ang first division yung position ng captain if you're following the manga I think this is where Takimichi will now come in as the captain of the first division 
Okay, the way the way I see it. Okay, at least the way I see it. This will have re re this will have repercussions from within the gang. You come at any Baji, and of course we saw how Baji and uh, Matsuno met, and Matsuno's eventual joining of Toman, vice captain of the first division. The way I see it, these two gear shifts will now play a role in the final two episodes of this anime. Final two, nga ba? Plot wise, plachado. Kasi it involved two flashback sequences. Eh. The plot was ironed out so well, you can easily mistake this as as one episode. Kasi eh, yung flashback moment ni Mikey, uh, that spelled the difference. Tapos ito pang tumati yung flashback moment ni ni Matsuno. So, lalo na paganda sa episode na to kasi nakita na natin ngayon kung paano sila nagkakilala ni Baji. And how, well, common sense, Baji recruits Matsuno for Toman. At, yeah, doon na talaga nalaman ni Matsuno na walang ya, this, this nerd of a, of a boy is the first division captain of the Tokyo Manji Gang. So, talagang gulat ni Matsuno nung nagpakilala si Baji as such. Wow! <laughs> eh, siguro by that, during that time, anim lang talaga sila sa Toman. So, for Baji to take down that entire gang all by himself, talagang, if you're a delinquent like Matsuno, talagang mapapasali ka sa Toma ni, Uy, teka, uy, sali ako, sali ako. Mapagano ka talaga eh. So, now, the plot is that well ironed out. Kumbaga, maganda yung pagkakamesh ng dalawang flashback sequences sa episode na to. Talagang, uh, it's an aftermath episode in every sense of the word. So pace, flow, and plot, aha, uh -huh, they came together for this episode. Arguably one of the best aftermath episodes for uh, summer 2021. One of the best I've seen. So, Tokyo Revengers episode 22. It's Sunday, kaya TV mass time. Just couldn't wait for um, for this anime to end. I really want to know how it's going to end. I say there's the issue of Kisaki. There's the issue of um, who's going to replace Baji. I don't want to confirm nor deny it. Baji needs a replacement in the first division. Pero kung susundan yung yung, yung hierarchy, baka si Matsuno muna. Kasi bago pa lang sa Toman si Takemichi. So, it's going to well, I I think he knows I think he knows Mikey's style of leadership talagang may hierarchy na sinusod dito. And Knowing Takemichi, he's going to respect that. At aware naman si Matsuno of Takemichi's intentions to become the leader of Toman. Let's see how it all plays out in the final two episodes. Okay mga ka lifestyle, you're done with that. So again, Tokyo Revengers Episode 22 deserves another mic drop. In the tradition of Sunny Boy, Vanna Pirate Princess, and Night Dead 2041, no teasers. Kasi itong apat na sa roster na to, ang hindi nag teaser ng susunod na episode. But they're all great animes.
So let's just do the drill, mga ka-lifestyle. Huwag na kayo magreklamo. Let's wait for next week and watch episode 23. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Romo was uh, doing his own investigation on the Luke man kasi narinig niya na lumabas na yung lumabas na ito. Kumaga si Luke naging ito, nabalitaan nga niya eh. So went to the library to ask for Mimi's help. And oh, narinig niya pero parang oh, it it seemed to ring a bell with her kasi she is a former Goha president. Hindi niya magdadala ko sana ako san san Saan galing yung yung suit-suit ni Luke noon as the Luke man. So while this was going on, Luke was <laughs> Luke was looking for that looking for the card fusion. Eh nandoon siya mismo sa pinag sa pinaglabanan nila ni Hugo as the Luke man. So is it yeah, a pick axe with so, he starts he starts um he starts picking away at the rocks ba ba sa alin nandoon eh. Tak 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 tak. The novel. Who shows up? You he's making sort of successful in brainwashing Luke. Um, uh, sinabi lang niya kay Luke na ito yung nawawala nilang kapatid. That Luke is the sixth sibling. And we all know how uh what's call this? How how gullible the Duel King is. Naniwala sa agad. Nasa go ahead office sila well, to to sneak in and investigate. So si Roa, si Swirly at si Mimi. They were in, in, in this garden penthouse of Goa Corp. Nakita nila si Luke at si Yuo magkasama. Tinanong nila, "Ba, mo dito kasama, bakit kasama mo 'yan?" So sinabi ni Luke that he is the sixth president sibling. Paniwalang paniwala. Inannounce na rin niya sa buong Goha City that he is the sixth president sibling. So, nalaman na rin to nila Yuga. Inamon niya si Roa. And Roa, well, Ro, Ro, Roa uh, gracefully turned it down but tuloy pa rin ang paghahamon ni Luke. Ano ba Roa? Agad dyan ka na lang ba? Mm. Tinanggap ni Roa hamon. So, naglaban. Nag-duel. Duo went back and forth per turn. And while um, while this was going on, pinauna na ni Roa sila mimi at ano, Swirly para magano ba? Ang tawag nito? Magmanman, mag, mag, mag-investiga. Eventually, Roa lost. Kasi nilabasan ni ni Luke yung kanyang tatlong tatlong aces na puro level 7. Si Dragias, Metagias, at si Miragias. Pro level 7 yun, malalakas lahat yun. Nailabas yun yung tatlong yun. He was able to beat Roa, but surprisingly, without using fusion. Hmm. Eventually, nalaman no, na na-confirm yung suspicions ni, ni Mimi. Na, kasi meron, meron doon tagoan ng mga mascara for the Goha president eh. Wala doon yung isa. So, it confirms her suspicion na Itong, itong mask na ginamit ni Luke as the Luke man Isa pala sa mga masks as Goa President Pero, may pinagtatakan din siya Bakit gamay na gamay ni Swirly ang controls towards that, uh, that, uh, that restricted part of the building? Bakit alam niya ang password? O ano? Bakit alam ni Swirly yon? Final scene Nagkumpirensya ang ang Team 7 well, what, what is now remaining of Team 7 kasi si Luke medyo <laughs> uh, na nagoyo na ni Yuo So, what remains of Team 7 and of course, si Laroa Sabi ni Gakoto, based on what, uh, what, the, what Roa and Mimi have have shared with the, with the rest of Team 7s Finigure niya na probably the only time he can use fusion si Luke is when he's the Luke man. So sabi lang ni Sabi lang ni Yuga, pwede. 
paghimay-himay natin ngayon mga ka lifestyle. Let's break this episode down ARD style. Pace. The time this episode became uh kumaga na nahasin yung pace is when you will shows up. Every time this um this no good pip squeak shows up, the pace picks up. Kasi hindi gagawa na mabuti tong itong batang to eh. Hindi hindi gagawa na mabuti tong mukong na to eh. Ayun nga. He was able to brainwash Luke. Uh, made him believe that he is the si- he is their lost sibling. Ito, eh, oh, bakit naniwala agad si Luke? <laughs> wala naman, wala naman siyang fa- facial features pala, wala naman siyang resemblance sa kahit sino sa mga president siblings eh. But the face will make you realize another thing. While the duel was going on, kung napansin niyo, kung napanood yung episode, Napansin natin lahat na hindi ginamit ni Luke ang fusion habang kalaban si Roa. That's because of one thing. Sinabi niya kay, sinabi kasi ni Roa sa kanya na you rely too much on fusion. Akala ko ma uh, ang makakalaban ko yon si Luke mismo. Medyo na piss off si Luke doon. Eventually beat Roa without using fusion. Pero in reality, wala siyang card na ganun. Dineduce kagan nila Rowat Mimi na maybe his usage of fusion is connected to that mask. So, yun nga, na-figure, na-figure out din ni Gaoto na baka na, na magagamit lang ni Luke ang fusion when if he's the Luke man. So, yun yung mask karang yun. So, sinangkayunan naman siya ni Yuga. Pwede rin mangyari yun. If they were to slow the pace down, hindi ano eh. Baka hindi ma-appreciate lalo yung episode because you've seen this kind of an episode before. Um, you've seen this kind of a duel before. I've seen this kind of a duel before. Here in Sevens, nope, it's nowhere near character development. Luke proved Roa's point right. Kasi, o nga, Tinalo mo nga si Roa without using Fusion. Eh, you don't have that card right now to begin with. Magagalim mo lang ang card na yun kapag ikaw si Luke Man. Hmm? Like in Zexal. Nagagamit lang ni Yuma yung Shining Draw kapag uh, if, he is in, if he's in Zexal mode. Whether in um uh, whether in classic, silver, or gold, Zexal. Doon na niya magagamit yung technique ng Miracle Draw. Ganun lang dito yun. Siguro, kaya sinabi ni Roa yun, he really want, he's really egging look on to use Fusion. Siguro may tinatago rin pangontra si Roa, pero Luke didn't bite into his mind games. Talagang tinuloy niyang talunin si Roa without using fusion or he simply doesn't have the card <laughs> but he was good enough to beat Roa flow naman the only gear shift ane, the first gear shift I saw here was yung ano yung nagpakilala na si Luke as the sixth sibling of course due to Yuo's instigations uh, I told you guys before hindi, nag, hindi gagawa na mabuti itong Ito, itong batang to. Hindi gagawa ng mabuti to. There's no one there to challenge him. Si Yuran, uh, pinakulong niya. Then of course, yung mga iba pa niyang siblings daw, wala kasi nagsiresign. Mag- patapos talunin ng ng mga ibang lead character. Okay, so, he's the only president left standing already. Pero, like I said, in the last review, there's another sibling. So, I think he's already faced the reality that he cannot have sole possession of Goha right now. Dahil, buhay pa. Okay? Active pa sa pagiging president ang isa pa nilang kapatid na nawawala. You remember one scene in, that, in this episode wherein Yuran was also watching uh, Luke's announcement that he is the sixth president sibling? You could see the look on Yuran's face. That, ano yung siguro? Hindi naman ikaw nawawala namin kapatid eh. Ang ginagawa mo dyan? Looks like, and, well, he knows 
uh, what you all is capable of. Siguro, alam niya na mukhang bin, mukhang bin, win, bin rain wash na to ng kapatid niya. Right now kasi, he, you all needs to justify his position as president. Kailangan mahanap niya agad yung yung nawawala nilang kapatid. The sixth sibling. So, ang pinalabas niya ang isang mga tao, si Luke. Of course, uh, ito namang si Luke, paniwalang-paniwala na siya'y nawawala, kap- siya nawawala nilang kapatid. Luke, wake up! Hindi mo kakamukha ang isa sa kanila eh! Hello! <laughs> Ay, nako. This is one reason why Tiger, his older sister, is always is always calling him an idiot. <laughs> this is one reason why he just showed it here. There's nothing there's nothing else I could say about the first gear shift. Talagang gear shift siya because it totally totally changed the complexion of season 2. Second gear shift was when Roa basically um played mind games with Luke. He was um subliminally forcing him to use fusion. Why did I call this a gear shift? Kasi it just goes to show you how well, how strong a duelist Luke is. That's number one. Number two, I guess he's realized that he doesn't need fusion to, to beat anybody. Nakita niya nun sa upisa ng episode. Hinahanap yung card of fusion. Uh, it's nowhere to be found. Kinunclude na nila Kakoto, nila Roa, ni Mimi that the only time Luke can use that card is when he is the Luke man. Excuse me. The final gear ship was, yeah, during the final scene. Nalaman din ni Mimi na yung mascara na sinot ni Luke non as the Luke man that, that turned him into the Luke man is actually one of the masks na missing ngayon sa President's Changing Room ng Goha Corp. Nakita nila mismo ni Swirly. Pero, why did I call this a gear ship? Kung hindi nyo napansin, may napansin kasi si Mimi kay Swirly. Ayun nga. Nagtaka si Mimi kung bakit parang super gamay ni Swirly ang restricted area na yon. Password, alam. Anong gagawin kung may, may sumita? Alam niya. And kung uh, what's it called this kung anong anong dapat i-expect ng mga pupunta dun kung ano makikita nila so all these details takang-taka kasi Mimi kung bakit ganito na lang ang knowledge ni Swerdy sa mga bagay na to these three gear shifts I saw Based on my viewing experience with, with this anime franchise, it will play a role down the line. If it if it ain't in the next episode, future episodes. So kung yare, hindi naman tandaan yung time na ganito ang analysis nila, you can always go back to this episode. Plotwise, malinis. Although there are lots of things to absorb in this episode the fact remains the same yung continuity ng duel ay nandun so through that duel we found out that uh, Roma has uh, that Luke has been completely brainwashed by by Yuo and um, Roma did something to uh, to to make Luke use fusion sana but um, Luke went into a reality check of his own he did not bite into Roa's mind games talagang he proceeded to beating Roa without using that card talagang yung original na game plan niya ilabas lahat ng level 7 yung dragons pa pagatakin hanggang sa maubusan ng life points sa kalaban yeah, that's his uh, that's his smash mouth style. So he completely relied on that during uh, during that part. Na during that part of the duel scene. If it weren't for 
a clean plot like that, hindi natin marirealize na may mga small details pala na dapat nating tignan dito. It may uh, what you call this? It may become a factor in future episodes. Katulad ng the look the look man's mask is actually a, a Goa president's mask. It's now missing. Kinonfirm na ni nila Sorley at Mimi yon. And Mimi's observation of Swirly na, na talagang gawin niya ang controls ng restricted, mga restricted area and alam niya kung saan dapat pumunta para hindi maispatan ng mga security drones. Kano, kasi guro ni Mimi, bakit alam ng bata itong ganito? Eh, top secret ang information na ito ah. Based on this plot, I am slowly piecing together I am a theory. Maybe Swirly is the real sixth sibling. You feel me, mga ka-lifestyle? Tignan nyo! Ever since season 2 started and he first appeared, hindi nagtanggal ng maskara itong si Swirly. No one knows, not even Team Sevens themselves, kung ano ang tunay niyang itsura. He is always in this dinosaur costume! Sinisinda na nga siya ng iba eh. Even officials at Goa 7 Elementary. Where he, of course, he, he studies in. Pero I think he's given a good reason every time. And um, when, it, when it came to the president's siblings, he is somewhat silent. Somewhat. This episode has shown us that, well, even Swirly has his secrets. It's not just his, his actual, uh, his actual looks. But I think he knows a thing or two about Goa, about bypassing Goa Corp security. I really have that feeling right now that he is the real sixth sibling. Uh, it's just my theory, folks. It's just, uh, it's just my observation. Pero may evidence. <laughs> This is what the plot will make you realize. So, it was a really good plot and a really clean one. If the plot were this clean, hindi ko... Baka hindi ko na deep dive na maigi ang episode na to. Kasi, talagang... Misteryosong character itong si Swirly eh. He just came into Team Sevens' lives na... Uh, na parang hulog ng langit. Na kunwari eh... Wala siyang alam sa dueling, pero wow! He can use any deck and beat you with it! Ganong kagaling! You can't be that good over that! Ako lang nagsasabi sa inyo. May mga sikreto tinatago to si Swirly. And, if the plot were this clean, we wouldn't, we wouldn't, um, we wouldn't ask ourselves those questions. So, pace, flow, and plot, they came together for this episode. I got this little complaint about the dual scene. Kasi, ever since Seven started, it has this, um, not, it has always delivered uh, real quality dual scenes. But, no, don't get me wrong, mga lifestyle. This is a quality dual scene. Kasi, um, nagpakita talaga ng lakas dito on his own si Luke. But, Ang hina ng dating eh. I don't know, kasi it's Robo versus Luke. I think that, yeah, it was the first time that these two faced off in a duel. I think this is the first time Luke and Roa faced each other. Pero, na, medyo na-hype na ako nung, ano eh, nung nagsiset up na sila eh. But, as the duel progressed, I don't know, parang, anyway, I'll explain it later. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 63. Yeah. Sum up. Okay. I think it's obvious to you guys right now kung bakit one thumb up ang rating ko. You're correct. It's because of the dual scene. Not what we just 
found out in this episode or what we have uh what kind of conspiracy theories we have formed it's the dual scene itself Kasi, this is probably the first time Roa and Luke faced each other in a duel medyo na hype na ako nung nag-uumpisa pa lang yung duel but later on parang it felt like deja vu like like i've seen this kind of progression in a duel before i've seen this in Jude versus Asuka in GX season 2 i've even seen this in uh Yuma versus yeah Yuma versus Vector in Zexal season 2 it, it, it was quite a character development episode for uh it, it was actually a two episode duel the, in, in those two episodes talaga na develop ang character ni Yuma doon he even yeah doon yan doon siya nag evolve into Silver Zexal from Dark Zexal that was big down god level na duelist so I don't know, because those were very exciting duels. Talagang what you can call the yung ke yung Jude versus Asuka two. Um, it was quite a reality check, reality check for Asuka. Kasi yun talaga ang uh, ang point ni Jude kung bakit na ininstigit ng ganon si ano eh, kung bakit yung ginanda ng ganon si Asuka because she because he knows kung ano ang weakness ni Asuka kapag uh, running high on emotions si Asuka may 70% chance na matatalo siya sa isang duelo at yun nga nangyari and yung kay Yuma naman talagang from absolutely pathetic form Dark Zexal biglang naging God tier form si Silver Zexal Silver Zexal pa lang nun so wow Mapa- mapapawaw ka sa duelo na yun yung Yuma versus uh, Vector. So, wala hindi ganito to eh. Eh first time pa namang nag nagharap sa duelo ang dalawang to. And I don't know, parang naging bland yung dating sa akin. But I wouldn't call it a disappointing duel kasi um yung yung galing nilang dalawa na ilabas nilang lahat dito. Halos. So, we'll have to give them that. We'll have to give uh, Studio Bridge for that. Kaya, ganun lang ang rating ko for this episode. So again, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 63. One thumb up. Sorry, my fellow Yu-Gi-Oh! fans. One thumb up lang for episode 63. Next episode has been teasered. And... Looks like we're back to uh, the trademark of this. One of the trademarks of Sevens. Aside from fan service, there's also the funny moments. Yung comic relief. It already established its own brand of comic relief in the franchise. Kaya, medyo paniniwalaan ko ang teaser na to. Because, well, um, Konami never fails to deliver the goods. Kaya, it's okay to... It's okay to uh, loosen the belt up, so to speak. Uh, yeah, well, for the rest of you, you'll have to do the drill. Wait for next week and watch that episode. Ako, papanoorin ko pa rin. So in the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. The journey of that uh, of that stone led them to yeah led them to Orleon. Because they gave them the map of the Bourbon Master para sundan. So they they needed to go to Orleon. Kung uh, kung saan pwedeng malaman yung pinaka source ng ng batong ito na binigay na binigay sa kanya ng tatay niya si Fena. Uh, well, they went. They went from the sea to the river. That's how. Well, you gotta admit how versatile submarines are. Kaya ilo na papasok nila. So yun na nangyari. Kaya na just couldn't decide on where to go. Kasi, but 
talaga tar- tar- para sa pagkabobo niya uli. Uh, si Diyos ko rin uh, totally read the map kasi ang daming opening. Sabi lang ni Yogi Maro, just choose the opening according to your guts. Kung magagat feel. O pinili niya yung board ng yung, yung pinto na maraming uh, maraming board. Kung baga talagang sealed shot siya. Bale wala pala kay mga kabayo. Yung malaking tao nila. Isang sipa lang. Wala na. <laughs> so they went in. So while they were busy uh, figuring out this map and while they were in it, well, was about to step into crash their party Grace O'Malley and her crew so sumunod sila and all of us but while they were figuring out this 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 maze then I suddenly went into a trance kasi na, napansin ni Yukimaro kay Ishitan parang may kakaibang kita na ngayon kasi sinabi ni Ishitan it's just you So may mga may mga funny moments din dito uh, while while they were figuring out stuff pero ang talagang sinusunod nila dito si Fena. And there came a fork in the road. Dito pumasok si Tra, sa translate stick si Fena. This is where it really got serious kasi as if alam niya ni Fena kung saan pupunta. So she said, "Right." So na sila. Then but Uh, unbeknownst to them, sinusunda na pala sila ng Kobe Grace O'Malley. They came to this this huge temple na I don't know, parang hindi, hindi ba siya temple, pero parang palawak na kweba, sabi ni Fena. Put your torch on that basin. So, sinunod siya ni Makaba. Boom! Nag-ilaw lahat. So, nagtaka na rin si Shitang kung bakit alam, alam na alam ni Fena kung paano pa ilawin ang lugar na to. Then, ayun, there in the place there was a, was a cauldron of sorts. Merong parang slot na ganun na para sa stone. Nilagay ni Fena doon yung bato. And, tilitan ng crew niya, parang, nang special pa. Until Mahaba found a a peephole sa tabi. So, doon niya tinignan. Uh, Sinabi na niya sa iba. Hmm. I see something here. So, Karen steps in. Parang, sabi niya, parang meron nga. Nakita niya na parang if you look at the uh, if you look at the stone and slots in a certain way, They will form Roman numerals. Sino lang ni Karen ngayon sa isang papel? Nakita niya agad, these are coordinates. Kung maga, uh, siguro yung, yung numbers sa taas, latitude. Yung numbers sa baba, longitude. So that, that's how you, basically, gano'n talaga eh. Kahit, kahit hanggang ngayon. Who steps in? Hmm. Grace O'Malley and her group. Ayun, hinostage pa lang nila si Pena. Kasi, Si Fena humiwalay sa grupo. Uh, as if something or someone was calling her. So, yun pala, it led her to John of Arts too. Sinabi lang ni Fena, you were calling me. At mga, may, medyo napaiyak si Fena. She instantly recognized it as John, as John of Arts burial place. Doon pala nakalibig si John of Arc. Doon siya, doon siya dinukot ng isang tao ni, ni Omani. Ayun, final scene. Well, nakuha rin ni Omani ang coordinates. At akala niya, these are the coordinates to El Dorado. Sabi na ng kapal, what are you talking about? So, hindi alam ng crew na kung ito nga ang El Dorado na, na coordinates. But, pero, inasong kagad ni Omani na... These are the coordinates to to El Dorado. So what does she do to to keep the crew from rescuing Fena? She seals them in. Pinasabog yung yung entrance to that to that place. Just goes to show na kung gaano katarantado ang kalaban si Grace O'Malley. Nararamdaman na lang ni sa nila kasama na 
Lahat ba na yung isa sa marina ni, ni Pagyaning Dagomana? So let's break this down ARD style. Pace. Medyo nagiging tense na sa, sa final half of the episode. Nung Pena was already in a trance. Kasi, uy, bakit? Napansin mo eh. Mukhang ibang tao na si Pena. Uh, it was scary. It was a bit scary. Kasi, parang, parang nagkaroon na ng ibang personality si Pena. Once, we, once they were, once they encountered that fork in the tunnel, doon, doon ang simula to. So, the pace will make you realize that and make you feel concerned for Pena. Ganong kaganda ang pace ng episode na to. And of course, the, uh, With a few funny moments while while they were on the way. Nakakatawa nga si Karen dito. <laughs> takot na takot. Even yung, yung strongman ni Omari, si Ching, natatakot din sa lugar na to. Kasi ang daming ano eh. Ang daming book, ang daming karansay, tsaka bungo na nakakalat sa daan, sa daanan. Yukimaro instantly figured, figured it out na these are the scouts of mostly women and children. The pacing will make you uh, realize the terrifying nature of this episode. Flow naman. First gear shift was when Fena uh, just banked on her gut feel. Not on the map. <laughs> Sabi niya, dyan, dyan may pumasok sa pito niya. As her crew, sunod sila. What does this gear shift tell us? Well, Fena is slowly asserting herself as the captain of the Bonito. She has a uh, she has a samurai crew along, but we couldn't consider them pirates because they're not actually after treasure or anything. They're just after Fena's past or Fena's uh, true identity. Second gear shift was when Fena entered that trance. Simply lang ang sinasabi ng gear shift na to sa atin. There is more to Fena than Fena knows about herself. So again, the question posed by Abel checks out. Fena, do you really know who you are? So dito nga po mapasok yung tanong na yun. Kasi she just went to a trance and now knows the way to that, ano, yun, yung lagay ng, ng batong yun. Tapos kung iwan pa siya sa grupo, she... Wow, through that trance, she found Joan of Arc's tomb. This gearship will also tell us that Fena's quest is beyond treasure. It's beyond just something. It, it makes treasure hunt superficial. Kaya yung, yung talagang bakay ni Omali, mababaw lang yun. There is more to Fena's quest than just treasure. This probably more than that kasi yung pagkaka tuntun niya sa TV na ni Joan of Arc, that means something. There is probably more to Fena's lineage than just being a hot man. Ito tumatayo balahibo ko ngayon just by telling this to you guys. Final gear shift was when, well, O'Malley takes Fena hostage. So, ayun, alarma na kagad ang ano, ang, ang crew ni Fena. Sina, well, why did I make this a gear shift? Simply lang. Because Grace O'Malley knows the history of the Goblin Knights. At nakilala niya kagad ang mga to. Na ito mga descendants ng Goblin Knights. According to her story, the Goblin Knights downed 3,000, so- 3,000 Spanish soldiers during the Battle of Dunkirk. Hindi pa lang kailan nila Yukimaru yun. Pero hindi na, they did not openly admit to it. But you can see the look on all of their faces that uh, O'Malley's story checks out. They are the descendants of the Goblin Knights. But right now, they are just uh, Fena's private security. Kumaga, sila ang secret service ni Fena. This gearship will also tell you how, how much of a villain Grace O'Malley is. That's why she is known as the Pirate Queen. She will go to great lengths just to get her treasure. Even take, take hostages with her. Kahit si Fena, 
and seal off her her group para walang tulong to sa kanya or so it seems the final scene doesn't tell much to be honest so these three gearshifts that I saw all three of them will play a role down the line in this anime you know na nakikita ko especially where we are now we're now about to end this anime's uh, first half of the run say episode 5 na Fena is just a 12 episode run so we're nearing the first we're nearing the end of the first half kaya kaya dapat tumutok na tayo because these three gear shifts will spell the difference in this anime plot wise malinis bakit? kasi There are no side stories to show. Although, uh, may mga pinagkita mga characters dito that, uh, that actually pertain um, to the history of this place, yung, yung case of Orlean. And of course, the origin of Fena's group. They are the descendants of the Goblin Knights. The original Goblin Knights. Uh, sabi nga ni Omani, Goblin Knights are the reincarnation of Satan. Or sorry to that effect. Talagang, she doesn't want to engage with these guys. Uubusin sila ng mga to. But, good for her, she knows. <laughs> Talagang, Fela has a formidable group. And they will do everything they can to protect her. That's what this plot will make you realize. Ganon kalinis kasi. Well, meron nga na nung mga uh, pinagin dito. Pero, I couldn't judge them as side stories kasi hindi naman nag-veer away ang, ang episode to another to a, di- to a entirely different scene talagang nagkwento ng si Umali at yung pagkaka-trans ni Fena so malinis pa rin ang plot so pace, flow, and plot They came together for this episode. This anime has just given us another great episode. Talagang kapanapanabik ang Fena. So, Fena Pirate Princess, episode 5. Imagine, kung ganito ang, uh, kung ganito na ka-exciting ang, ang anime ito, what was the second half of run? Now, dito pa lang eh nakakasubukan na sila Fena at si Umani I just couldn't wait for uh, for the next episode natin ko talaga kung anong kung anong nangyari sa crew ni Fena so hindi ko na matatagalin ang review ito so again Fena Pirate Princess episode 5 another total summer this anime mga lifestyle in the tradition of Tokyo Avengers, Sunny Boy, and Nightmare 2041. Fela Bar Princess has no teasers again. All in good, kasi may din naman tayong gagawin. We're going to wait for next week and watch that episode. So in the meantime, mga lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. So, ano nangyari dito? Well, successful yung teleport. So, they are now in basically on another planet pero in another timeline. Nasulit yung, <laughs> yung nasulit nila yung space, space time continuum. Alright, so to speak. But anyway, they met up with a, um, with the brigade commander so, so of sorts. He is one he is not other than one of the OG Getter pilots. Si Musashi Tomoe. Yeah. Sayo <laughs> ngale. Yung Unit 3 ng pinako ng Getter Robo. Siya ang pilot. Siya ang uh, siya ang pilot noon. Grabe. Eh tama tama, dala nita ako may yung uh, yung yung favorite construction helmet niya na, na 
na sot-sot pa natin ni Takuma minsan. Ayun. Kanya pala yun. <laughs> he briefed both the Getter and Getter Soros teams kung ano na nangyari over the past wait for it 2,500 years. There has been war going on with the Andromeda Stellaration for that long until Getter Emperor was born. So, kumbaga, Apa, para na siyang mga, mga nakarang Getter Robo. It's, it's, it almost looks like Getter Art, pero in worship form. Kumbaga, talagang, talagang ma, tatlong malalaking battleship to na magbubuo ng isang Getter. Ganong katid dito. <laughs> it can look several planets in one go. And it has decimated the, um, the Andromeda Stellaration race for countless number of years na. Musashi has made the commitment to, to totally drive the, Androm- the Andromeda Stellaration to extinction. Talagang, with, wow ah, e may tatlong malalaking battleship type na getter to. With these as your weapons, wala! Wala kang titira, wala kang bubuhayin talaga na na isang lupon na mga nilalang. You will leave nothing to to existence. Talagang. And it has shown its power. Yung yung emperor unit na talagang kinokomad ni Musashi, it flushed out the Andromeda Stellaration on one planet. So, naglabasan, oh in exterminate na ng mga smaller units. Grabe. Nagkaroon to ng moral dilemma ang Ark at saka ng Getter Soros teams. Kasi, although sinabi ni Musashi na they come from the past that was way before Getter Emperor's time, so they're free to roam this timeline without, without, uh, what you call this? Without disrupting their own. So, safe daw sila rito. But, the moral dilemma came in when they actually saw Getter Emperor in action. Walang bubuhayin ano to. No race will be left alive. Pero talagang, kaya pala galit na galit ang Andromeda Stellaration sa mga Getter. It's because of these guys, yung Getter Emperor. Grabe. Several Moral dilemma related questions have been raised by um, by the ARC pilots. The uh, the Getter Soros team is, has been silent most of the time kasi hindi nila kitang-kita na hindi nila ma-comprehend yung situation. Inassure naman sila ni Musashi na it's either me or you or you guys are just too soft. Be, yun ang bottom line niya. Pero inexplain naman din niya. He directed the conversation at Kamui, a Sorian. Di ba kamu isorian ka? You live in Earth too, di ba? If the Andromeda Stellaration is successful at destroying the Earth, saan kayo titira? Kumbaga, yun, yung, yun ang point na, 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 na nire-raise ni Musashi. Well, he's got a point. Both the humans and the Saurians share, uh, have a common planet, which is Earth. Pag yun ang nasira, uh, para-para sila walang tirahan. Or, they will cease to exist. And that's how ruthless the Andromeda Acceleration is. Ngayon, merong kiniwentong origin story dito si Musashi na talagang na talagang what's you call this? Um, nasak ang tenga ko when I, when I heard it. Ito pala si, si Emperor Bry ng Yaki Empire. Tao pala dati to. All the resources and weaponry he used to form the Yaki Empire Galing din pala sa Andromeda Stellaration to. The Andromeda Stellaration has been screwing with our history far before Getter Robo Arc. So, marami, marami lang malang utang sa atin ito. Itong, itong punyet ng Andromeda Stellaration na to. So, that fired Takuma even more. Final scene. Well, after all the... Um, the moral dilemma bullshit that, that Takuma has taken in, he throws them all out the window and says this, I don't care if this timeline eats shit. 
As long as McDonald is on the other side, I will wring his fucking neck for killing my mother. <laughs> yun lang yun. So, anong ginawa nila? Ila Kamui, Bako, at ng Gettersaurus team? Eh, di sumunod sa kanya. Naman yung buong Gettersaurus team. At least sila Kamui at Bako. Sunod na sila kita ako ma. Ayun. Sinugod na. At sumama na rin sa action. Talagang, when it comes to profanity, Takuma outdoes his father in that. <laughs> so, let's break this episode down ARD style. Pace. Medyo naging fast na nung ano eh. Hindi, umpisa pa lang ng... Correction. Umpisa pa lang ng episode, fast pace na. Dahil, bakbakang umati ka, Bob. Because the Andromeda acceleration is showing no signs of let up. Kahit in this timeline, and this and this deep in space i already have those road to the finale feels right here in this episode i had my feel of road to the finale feels talagang kumpleto there's over the top action moral dilemmas and reaffirmations by the by the main protag kumpleto talagang road to the finale <laughs> and the pacing will make you realize that and the profanity part, aha, nanjan, courtesy of Takuma. <laughs> Pagdating sa sa pagmumura, he outdoes his, he completely outdid, outdid his father in this anime. Nalago, <laughs> wala, walang, walang, uh, walang makasabay sa kanya pagdating sa pagmumura rito si Takuma. Nalago, which makes the road to the finale more, uh, a lot spicier. Talagang, hands down ako sa, sa pace ng episode na to. Road to the finale na. Pang mecha pa yung road to the finale feels. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift here was uh, when the Getter Art team was able to find the Getter Soros team. So, nag-regroup sila. Uh, tumakas muna sila to to get debriefed by Musashi. So, Ito pa lang si Musashi, hindi na pala ito yung original na Musashi. It's just a clone. Kasi, when the time game na umata, nag-counter-attack ang Drummond Acceleration, natamaan siya. Namatay. Yan ang gulan nga ng Getter Art team eh. Uy, uy, patay na itong kausap natin. Sabi naman ng, ng isa niyang staff, don't worry. There are there are lots of him that we can that we can bring out here. So, yun nga, lumabas, clone. Sila may pangakila ta ako ma. Sorry to keep you waiting. <laughs> If that ain't a gear shift to you, I don't know what is. Kasi kung hindi nangyari din ang gear shift na to, hindi magre-regroup ang Getter Arc at saka Getter Soros teams. They they might just fight blind here without a um Someone as OG as Musashi Tomoe to guide them. Fan service moment. That's what this. That was. That's what this gearship also delivered. We got a fan service moment. Because si Musashi Tomoe, all right, one of the original Getter pilots. Ito parang parang mismo Getter Robo. Second gearship was when nung nagsimula na yung kwento ni Musashi. Kumaga, uh, it's a debriefing 2,500 years in the making. Kung paano um, dinumila ng Andromeda Acceleration ang buong universe and how Getter Emperor was born. At pinakita pa nga doon kung paano nagbubuo into Emperor 1. Eh, tang inang yan. Tatlong malalaki battleship. Oh. Pak! Pak! Getter Emperor 1 na. Which can totally destroy galaxies basically kasi ang isang ang isang getter isang part ng getter emperor nakakasira na ng isang planeta eh more more pa kung magsama-sama pa sila that's what this gear ship is trying to tell me final gear ship was Takuma just reaffirmed this stand on the matter as long as McDonald is alive I'm gonna keep going at this until I until I choke the shit out of him. Basically, that's what 
ta ako ma-send here. Wala siyang pakialam sa current timeline. Wala rin siyang pakialam kung may nasisira pang planeta. As long as he gets to to kill McDonald with his own bare hands, he'll keep on doing this. Kumaga, it's a reaffirmation type of gear shift. So these three gear shifts that I uh, that I have uh, figured out, they will play a role in the final three episodes of this uh, of this Ghetto Robo series. Imagine a future with Takuma in it. <laughs> Things won't get any uh, any more violent than that. Rest assured, kapag si Takuma ang involved, the violence will pick up. Plot wise. Malinis. Although it's it's a it's it's a sort of a backstory episode, pero hindi mo hindi nyo may tatatwa ang ang continuity ng episode na to because we're in the future timeline. Eh. Professor Jin Hayato and the Dinosaur Empire sent these 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 uh these two sets these two pilot teams to the future for a purpose. To see to it that the humans from the past will not interfere in this one. Yan ang nakikita ko. And the plot is making me see that. Ganong kalinis ang... Chap! <laughs> Ganong kalinis ang plot ng episode na to. Talagang... Uh, it totally disregarded the... Um, the backstory. Pero we all need to know what happened. It still followed the continuity of the anime in general. I don't care what you say about this episode. Although may backstory ito, malinis pa rin ang plot. So, base, flow, and plot, I almost wasn't able to distinguish one from the other. Kasi, future timeline eh. Pero, I was able to ascertain the continuity of the plot. Kaya, this particular Get the Robo series gave us one hell of an episode. It still delivered the goods. Talaga naman, si Takuma. <laughs> Wa siyang pakina kung anong mangyari sa timeline na to as long as he gets to kill McDonald himself. In his own words, sinabi niya, as long as I get to wring that motherfucker's neck. <laughs> like he's hell-bent on killing McDonald here. Siguro, siguro sasabihin niya rito kaila ka with Baco. Bahala na kayo sa mga ibang nakapaligid kay McDonald. Basta itira niyo lang sa akin yung putang ina niyan. <laughs> Ganun lang yan. Ganun lang siguro magiging usapan ng tatlong to. As long as you deliver McDonald to me, we're all good. So, Get a Robo Art Episode 10? Isip, isip pa. It's one hell of an episode nga, di ba? Oh, <laughs> two thumbs up. Studio Ikan is totally delivering the goods here. It's probably over. De- it's probably over delivering, you know, the way I see it. Because, excuse me, this episode will just will just show you that um how how hell bent Takuma is in killing McDonald, and how the human race is in eradicating the Andromeda acceleration in this point in time. At saka, hinahanap din pala ng, ng Brigada ni Musashi ang Star Border. Kumaga, it's a ready-made time travel device na kapag, ngayon, kapag natapos ang lahat ng to, both Getter Arc and Getter Soros can, can return to their timelines safely. Okay? And Probably more conveniently. So, something to look forward to in the next episode. Tandaan nyo, mga ka-lifestyle, we're on the road to the finale. Kaya, it can't get any more exciting than this. Parang din ang play ko rin anime na to ah. But anyway, let's just wait for the next, let's just wait for the next episode to, um, to come around. Sana more deep dives kasi, Episode 10 just encouraged another deep dive from me. Nakita niya naman, di ba? So again, Get a Robo Art Episode 
two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this great anime manga lifestyle. Title of the next episode has been teasered. Hmm. Title lang eh. So, hindi ko na pagkakatiwalaan ito. We'll just have to do the drill, mga lifestyle. We wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. The entire backstory of Siesta and Kimmy right before Siesta's death na nakita ni Kimmy was all a dream sequence by Kimmy. <laughs> At least it's not uh, part of a uh, grand plan by Spes to take him down. So he wakes up in his cabin room in a, uh, on a cruise ship. Just in his sponsor ni Yui ito. So yun nga. And who does Kimmy meet again? Char. Eh yun pala. May uh, may sarili na palang daang tinatahak si Char. So, well, she obviously took on her mom's detective role. And, um, she's a bit disappointed in Kimmy that up to now, he still hasn't taken on that detective role. Mataga ko na rin sinasabi ito, mga ka-lifestyle, for this anime. Kimmy should now take on a detective role. Total, he learned from Siesta. Directly. Eh, talagang hindi matanggap ni Char na hanggang ngayon hindi pa rin hindi pa rin matanggap ni Kimi na he can take on a detective role better than her right now nag, nag kanya kanyang landas ang dalawa Kimi somewhat took a uh, took a tip from Char that Spes is up to something and it's on this cruise ship and they're after Siesta's big quest. Loya yun. Eh kahit si Char hindi alam ko nini. Basta na lang kasi namatay nanay niya. Kimmy did some investigating on his own. Habang nag enjoy yung dalawa niyang kasamang babae si Lagisa at si Yui. The next morning, narinig na lang niya na may ina-announce sa radio room. Uh, it's being announced all over the ship that Nagisa Natsunagi has been taken hostage. Hoy! Sabi ni Kimi, Teka! Si Nagisa akin hostage! So, nag, uh, so, lahat ng crew ng, ng cruise ship, siyempre, uh, anong bihit? They're trying to, they're trying to search the entire ship for explosives or, and of course, the hostage and the hostage taker, of course. So, kinatok siya ni Yui. Sabi ni Yui, uh, Kimi, wala nga si Nagisa sa kwarto niya. They were looking all over for for Nagisa. And Spes actually, well, we still don't know yet if it is Spes, but they left a clue. Nakita ng isang, uh, nakita ng isang, isang crew. Uh, a book by, a book of Sherlock Holmes short stories na may nakalagay na note. It says, Come to the main deck this evening if you want to save Nagisa. They were looking frantically for Nagisa. And this was, this was the time when Kimi and Yoi searched, uh, searched this uh, auditorium. And, uh, Pilakan man naman siya ni, ni Yoi. Na, just breathe in. And, and take in all the uh, sort sorry to this effect, take in all the stress before the live performance we all know that Yui is a famous idol kaya alam niya kung paano i-handle ang sarili niya on stage so yun binigyan niya ng tip si si Kimi then on the night itself ayan well Kimi now has a good idea of who it is Kinol out niya si Chameleon. An agent of space yung nakalaban nila, nakalaban nila Char. Nakalaban nila ni Char nung huling sagupan ng space at saka ng Team Siesta. Hawak niya si Nagisa. Naka-hostage by the tail. Grabe. And well, basically pinapili siya ni Chameleon. Save all the passengers on his ship. 
or her. Eh, while this was going on, pina-evacuate na ni Yui ang mga, ang mga pasahero. So, evacuate. So, the evacuation, while, this, while the evacuation was going on, Kimi has left this choice. Them or Nagisa. Sinabi na ni Kimi sa final scene. That has been decided long ago. Kailangan ako ang unang mamatay bago sila. Draws out his gun. He probably shot Chameleon. Before that, sinasabi na ni Nagisa na siya na lang ang barilin. Total. She's, uh, well, siguro, kaya siguro totoo sila sabi ni, ni Char uh, during the first third of the episode. We'll get into that later. So, let's break this down. ARD style. Pace. First half of the episode, medyo cool lang. Chill. Especially during that scene where Char was gambling her tears away. <laughs> Nasita siya ni Kimi. Yeah, that, that, that was funny. Basically, hindi pa niya matanggap na hindi pa niya matanggap ni Kimi na na he can be a detective now. Kasi wala na ang nanay niya. So, yun, nag-usap naman sila at sinabi niya yun. Eh, guys, siguro, mabuti pala ako sa'yo. I took on mom's mantle. Ikaw, hanggang ngayon, sidekick pa rin na mentality mo. No, she's... She's right on that. But, well, Kim is doing the best he can to, uh... Well, after all, he hates space. Kasi, sila nga naman ang pumatay sa mentor niya. So, when it comes to space, yeah, he is the world's greatest detective. So, the pacing will make you realize that. Ganong, ganong ka... Uh, ganong ka sulit ang pacing ng episode na to. Kasi first half, chill chill. And of course, uh, a couple reality checks. Second half of the episode, Hoy! It's, uh, it's, uh, it's case solving time. Bukan lang kasi nawawala si Nagisa at bukang hino stage ng isang... Uh, isang hindi pa nakikilala ng tao which eventually turned out to be Chameleon an agent of space wonderful flow naman well first gear shift here was well during uh, the conversation between Char and Kimi I didn't call that a gear shift simply na mga that Char and Kimi have um, have caught up on on what Siesta's dying wish was if there was kasi sa pagkakantanda ni Kimi wala naman walang iniwang ganon sa pagkakantanda naman ni Char meron daw and it was only until the final scene that Kimi realized what it was so he totally got the point when ayun nung nung nagpakita na yung hostage taker na si Chameleon well, he has already uh, figured that out already no one can hide himself better than Chameleon surprise space is up to no good again that's what this gear shift will tell you second gear shift is when well, we can now assume that Chameleon announced it in the radio room that Nagisa is missing. Why did I call that a gear shift? Kasi it set off the events of the second half of the episode. That particular gear shift will play a role in the final two episodes of this anime. Mukhang dito... Dito uli magkakasabukan si Kimi at ang Spes. Right now, if there's anything this gear shift can tell you, it's this. It's no longer Siesta versus Spes. But Kimi versus Spes, two words to describe it. Bad blood. Whether we like it or not, there's bad blood between Spes and Kimi. Well, because of uh, because of Spes, Siesta's now dead. 
And well, right now, Kimmy wants to take them down by it, even if it is by himself. But the way I see it, talagang desperado na ang spes na na patayin si Kimmy, cause he knows too much about them. Yeah, looks like um, the bad blood between these two factions has been rekindled because of this episode. That's what this gear shift will tell you. Final gear shift was when ayon nagharap na si Kimi at si Camilion. Why did I call this a gear shift? Again, simple mga lifestyle. Dito na realize ni Kimi ang big quest ni Shesta. Simply lang ang huling hiling ni Shesta that Kimi should not die. Well, uh, according to Kimi, none of his associates should die before him. Yeah, well, we can now simply de- deduce that Kimi shot Camilion. Habang hawak ni Camilion si si Nagisa. Oh, well, I don't know what, what Kim is going to do next after that one. Kasi yung mismo hostage taker ang pinaril niya. So, probably, as a natural reaction, mabibitawan niya si Nakisa. Maniwala kayo, hindi ko alam kung anong gagawin ni, ni Kimi right after that. So, we'll leave it up to the next episode. So, these three gear shifts, I've told you guys for each of them. They will play a role in the final two episodes of this anime. Lahat sila. Bloodwise. Malinis. It's already the final three episodes of this anime. And you really need a clean plot this time to set up a possible final confrontation between Kimi and Spes. Now that Kimi has this team of his and... Uh, and a third force named Char. Well, we still don't know if Char and Kimmy are actually on the same page when it comes to Spes. Pero, I got a good feeling that when it comes to Spes, oh hell yeah, Kimmy and Char are on the same page because they were there when Spes killed Siesta. The way I see it, there's hell to pay. And this is a perfect opportunity to 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 foot space the bill. That's what this plot will make you realize. It's clean and so enjoyable, so enjoyable that it will make you deep dive into the episode, just like what I did. So pace, flow, and plot. I almost couldn't tell one from the other. Ganong kaganda ang episode na to. Actually, gumanda ang episode na to nung uh, nung that scene where uh, Nagisa and Kimi were at that bar talking about things and na-realize ni, ni Nagisa na gano'n pala kaseryosong usapan yung Pinasok niya. And I thought, mm, looks like this is going to be a great episode after all. Ayun nga, second half of the episode, hinoste si Nagisa. Inannounce pa sa radio room ni Camillion. Well, we can now safely assume that it is Camillion who made that announcement on the radio room. Ganong ka... Ganong ka halang ang bito ang spes kasi. And who knows, baka... At this point, baka buhay pa rin si, ano, si, si Hell. We don't know. Kasi si Camillo pa lang ang lumalabas. So, the detective is already dead. Episode 10. from this episode I'd say we're um, we're being set up for a great finale kasi yung resolve ni Kimi against Spes mukhang nabuhay dito eh nabuhay uli yun 
because the series of uh, investigations he has done all throughout this anime can be tied to space. Una sa lahat yung pagkaka interrogate ni Bat during episode 2. At tinesting ang panibar kung talagang nakinaki sa ang puso ni Siesta. Ayun. Totoo. He wasn't able to to lay a finger on Nagisa. That was probably the go signal for Bat to just to just work with Kimi against Spes total. <laughs> Spes has already abandoned him. He might as well work with the enemy against them. So, isa nang ano yon, isa nang kakampi para kay Kimi yon against Spes. Pangalawa, yung to call this yung case ni Yui agad na figure out ni Kimi na Spes was behind this dahil mukhang talagang hinara si Yui and they want that eye of sapphire yung kaliwang mata ngayon ni Yui totoong sapphire yon and Spes has been after that jewel since uh, since siesta's time now, we still don't know as the viewer kung paano nakuha ng mga magulang ni Yui yun. Basta nalaman lang natin na Spes is behind the harassment Yui was experiencing during episodes um, episodes 3 to 5. So, again, isa pang utang na sisingilin ni Kimi sa spesyon. And pangatlo, this one. His, uh, well, Camillion taking Nagi sa hostage. Kimi, it's about time to foot spes the bill. Oras na para singilin mo ang utang nila. So again, the detective is already dead. Episode 10. This episode has been teasered. Mukhang may mangyayari ah. But I don't wanna trust it yet. It's just a title. Kaya let's just do the drill mga ka-lifestyle. We wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. good watching this episode uh, let's run it down muna the episode started off with a dream sequence by Alice uh, na panaginiba niya kasi yung isang siguro those days na boy pa nanay niya and we found out here through her dream sequence that her mother was the former head maid of that mansion yung kinalalagyan ng dupe ngayon kaya it's only natural for the Duke and Alice to grow up in that mansion. To at least spend their childhood days. Okay, Rob was there. Only yeah, a little bit younger. Okay, a little bit younger. But uh, a lot healthier. Sigurado. Merong sinabi dito na napagising si Alice. Sinabi ng... Well, the mo her mother's name pala is Sharon. Ganda ng, ganda ng pangalan. Di ba? Sharon. Sabi ni Sharon sa anak niya, I'll do what I can to protect you, Alice. I love you. So, eh, syempre, uh, uh, pagbamahal ng isang, ng, ng isang ina. Ayun. Lagi sinila na si Alice at hinawakan hinawa niya yung brooch niya rito. That, that's the brooch na nandun yung picture ng nanay niya. Went back to the Duke. He couldn't sleep. Uh, in, this, uh, in, this, uh, in this episode, he couldn't sleep. Sinamahan siya ni Alice nagdamit pajama pa and she even tried to undress oh <laughs> alam mo kahit sinong lalaki madidimonyo sa ganun oh my god I really saludo ako sa dukes ng ganito situation <laughs> it, it was a really funny moment knowing the dukes Chris ito pag si Alice dinidimonyo siya at every chance she gets Oh, it was really funny pero sinabi na rin ng Duke na medyo inantok na siya 
Alice can go to her quarters na. Ayun. Then, nagkwento naman, next scene, si Rob. Kinwento niya lahat eh. Uh, na inassign siya ng, ng nanay, ng nanay ng duke na, kumbaga, inassign siya ng lady of the house. Yung nanay ng duke, na alagaan ng duke in that mansion. Kasi by that, uh, siguro shortly after na umalis si Alice sa mansion, ayun, binato na siya ng curse ng, ng witch na yun. Yung witch na patay na ngayon. So, he was tasked to to take care of this this little boy from here on end. And the years progressed, naging rebellious ang Duke. Uh, the Duke was no, he was no longer listening to Rob. Then one day, ayun, uh, he, the Duke decided to just uh, hold himself in his room and break stuff just to pass the time. So, kumaga, with frustration comes fear. So, sabi, ng, sabi ni Rob, kung meron lang siya makakusap na kaedad niya para hindi ako mahirapan dito. So, the first person he thought of was Alice. So, siya pala ang siya pala ang nag-recruit kay Alice which, who at the time was uh, was with her aunt already kasi at that time patay na ang nanay niya si Sharon so kumbaga doon na siya so inampun na siya ng kumbaga parang kapatid siguro ni Sharon auntie ni Alice eh minamalupit siya nito halata ni Rob so in order for Rob to to rescue her ayun nirecruit siya for the Duke's employee and as they say the rest is history because of Alice the Duke is now a better person. And napansin ni Rob yun eh. You're... I've noticed, Your Grace, that you're, um, that you're smiling more often these days. Natuwa naman. Siyempre, matutuwa ang ano. Matutuwa ang Duke kasi napansin sa kanya yun eh. And the most, well, the most important scene of this episode is this. Dinuwit nila ang music, ang song version ng The Owl and the Pussycat. I know, kasi I've been a champion in declamation contest before. Kaya, I know what uh, what the Owl and the Pussycat is. It's a classic poem. Pagdating sa declamation contest, staple yan. Ginawa nilang kanta rito. And ang ganda ng kinilabas. So, it's a... Um, wow, it's a, it's a feel-good moment. Best feel-good moment in, in this entire anime. Final scene. Well, the Duke wanted to accompany Alice to her room like he always does because he, well, he, he is a gentleman. He really wants to express his gentlemanly self to, to the woman he loves at least kasi hindi naman niya mahahawakan eh, hindi naman niya mahalikan, hindi naman niya mahaakap. So, the least he can do is accompany her to her room. Escort her to her room. Yeah. To be, to be more specific. Pero, sabi ni Alice, it's okay. Ngayon, para para hindi na sumunod ang Duke, tumakbo na lang siya. To, to, she made a beeline to her own to her own room. Grabe. Uh, killing moment John. Guaranteed killing moment if you um, if you haven't seen the episode yet. So, let's break this episode down ARD style. Base. Okay lang yung bagal kasi eh, uh, kumbaga daily lives eh Daily lives style of uh, Storytelling for this episode Kaya yung pacing Expect it to be Slow enough Para magets mo yung Nangyayari sa mga characters Okay lang yan Kasi kung if you're going to If you're going to um, uh, Up the pace Masisira eh Masisira yung feel-good moments, the kilig moments. Masisira talaga. I got no complaints when it comes to the pacing of this episode. Talagang swak na swak for, for both a romance and a slice of life anime. We can now say that it is slice of life kasi eh. Well, ang daming feel-good moments sa episode na to. So, well, that's the hallmark of a slice of life anime. 
feel good moments. Especially yung duet scene nila. Music buff here. Kaya gulat ko eh. Wow! The Owl and the Pussycat ginawang kanta. And in Japanese pa. Buti na na may translation. Kaya, na, kaya nakita ko, Uy! The Owl and the Pussycat yan ah! So... Yan lang. <laughs> no complaints about the pacing. Flow naman! I only saw two gear shifts here. First gear shift was the dream sequence which is the opening scene of the episode. This gear shift goes to show us that well, Alice still misses her mother and um, she knows how hardworking and how good a maid her mother was. Head maid eh. Huh? Head maid ng mansion na yun. So, lahat ng lahat ng mayordoma at butler sa kanya tumatakbo for advice or on what to do next. So, talagang tapos may inaalaga ang pag-anak na na medyo sakitin kasi nung bata si Alice, medyo sakitin siya noon. So, ay inaalaga pa siya ng nanay niya. So, you gotta hand it to the woman. That, 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 that's, a, that's a real woman there. She is still good at her job while taking care of a sickly daughter. So, mababanga ka sa babaeng to. Although she's only an anime character. But oh, the admiration will will be pulled out of you. That's what this gear shift made me do. Kaya gear shift ito. It just, and um, Alice sort of bases on her performance as a maid to the past performances of her mother. Kasi nga, head maid nga ito dati. So, kumbaga, did I, did I do good, mom? Did I do good? And, nung, and in, and in one part, ng, ano, he, he, she was trying to get away from the dog para hindi na siya masamahan sa kwarto niya. Kasi, uh, it dawned on her the fact that one day, the dog will be broken of this curse. He will now go back to the main house and be accepted by his family again. And, baka hindi na siya isama dun. So, she's already preparing for that day. And, with that, sinabi niya sa, well, uh, in her mind, sinabi niya sa nanay niya, I'm a no good maid mother. Because, uh, I can't be with, I can't be with this grace. So, yeah, you, with that in that moment you you have to feel sad for Alice kasi napamahal na sa kanya duke eh. what made you think that oh no she, she's going to sexually harass the duke for nothing eh, eh. <laughs> not no not for money it's far beyond that halata eh halata sa actuations ni Alice towards the duke that's what this gearship will make you realize now final gearship was the duet scene yan Bakit ko tinawag na gear shift ito? Simple lang! The... This is probably the best bonding moment the Duke and Alice had in this entire anime. Because the Duke was able to make a song out of a classic poem. We all know it. Eh, kung... kung uh, madalas kayong sumali sa mga declamation contest like me when I was a kid. You know... The Owl and the Pussycat. Ginawang kanta rito. Ako, I sort of had a throwback moment when I saw the lyrics of this song. It takes me back to the days when I was very active in declamation contests. How old was I? Six, seven, eight years old? Ang galing ko nun. I was at the, I was at the top of my game during those times. Talagang, walang, well, if you think you're a strong contender, watch out. Watch out. Because I'm going to beat you in that contest. I have pulled the rug from under the best of them before when it comes to declamation contest. And, ang parating piece nila, this one. The Owl and the Pussycat. Kaya, throwback moment sa akin. Ang, ang eksenang ito. So, Wow. It's both a throwback and a feel-good moment for me. Kasi, I don't know. Kinawang kanta ang The Owl and the Pussycat. Kaling nga, dinuwid pa nila. Well, 
I hope they release this as an official song. Na pwede natin i-download sa Spotify, pwede natin pakinggan sa YouTube, pwede natin uh, or uh, that we can that we can listen to with our music players just just for ourselves. Kung mga oh, I am an Annie song buff, so I really want that on my playlist. Ang ganda eh. It's absolutely divine. Kumaga, ito talaga yung pin, yung pinakamatinding eksena sa episode na to. And it's a and it's a feel good one. I assure you guys. That's why I called it a gear shift. It deserves to be called a gear shift. So, these two gear shifts that I saw might not play a role. Unfortunately, might not play a role in the final two episodes of this anime. Tandaan nyo, Road to the Finale na tayo. And, wow, I got those Road to the Finale feels in this episode. Wala na akong pakialam kung hindi magkaroon ng, hindi maging factor ang isa man sa mga gear shifts na to in the final two episodes. Hey, I felt good watching this episode. That's enough for me. <laughs> Plot-wise, malinis. Although, there are two backstory sequences here. It was totally negligible. Pero in a good way. Kasi yung continuity ay nandun pa. You can still you can still feel the continuity of that episode. Kaya bali wala na yung dalawang uh, yung dream sequence ni Alice at yung uh, backstory sequence ni Rob. So, you can you can set that aside for a while. Pwede yun. Kaya, malinis pa rin ang plot. So, got no complaints about that. So, pace, flow, and plot, they came together for this episode. Giving, well, this anime has given us another great episode. Probably, it's best. Yan, sinasabi ko na. This is the best episode of this anime. Episode 10. So, the Duke of Death and His Maid, episode 10. Diretso na. Oh. Two thumbs up. It's an episode you would want to watch over and over and over and over again. Kasi, ibang, ano eh, ibang feels nito. It's one of those really good, feel-good episodes. I guarantee you, mga ka-lifestyle, hindi nyo pagsasawaan panoorin ng paulit-ulit ang episode na to. You might, you you can even disregard the other episodes of this anime, although they're also good, also though they're just as good. Pero this one, I felt really special in this episode. Talagang, JC stop over delivered in this episode. Talagang, it really made us feel good about ourselves. And of course, we again it made us cheer for the Duke and Alice. Sana magkatuluyan! Yay! This is a this is a romance anime, so natural na dapat irut natin, irut for natin ang si Duke at si Alice. I can't wait for the final two episodes of this anime. So again, the Duke of Death and His Maid, episode ten. Two thumbs up. The biggest two thumbs up this anime will ever be uh, will ever receive from me, mga lifestyle. Title of the next episode has been teasered. Hindi ko na patatagalin ng review ito, mga ka lifestyle. Let's just do the drill. We will wait for next week and watch that episode. Kaya in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest.